Wait, before we start, do you want a bundle of 30 printable Russian PDF cheat sheets? Teaching you words and phrases for conversations for free? Then click the link in the description and sign up for a free lifetime account to get access. In this video, you learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Russian. Hi everybody, my name is Katya. Welcome to the 800 core Russian words and phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Russian. But there is a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we'll include the previous lessons at the end. So after you learn the new words and phrases, stick around and review what you learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at RussianPod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally master Russian. Okay, let's get started. First is чистить, brush, чистить, чистить, brush. Иди чистить зубы. Go brush your teeth. Иди чистить зубы. Душ. Shower. Душ. Душ. Shower. Ты уже принял душ? Have you already taken a shower? Ты уже принял душ? Мыть. Wash. Мыть. Мыть. Wash. Он моет посуду. He's washing the dishes. Он моет посуду. Уходить. Leave. Уходить. Уходить. Leave. Я думаю, нам нужно уходить. I think we should leave. Я думаю, нам нужно уходить. Чек. 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 Можно чек, пожалуйста? Could I get the check, please? Можно чек, пожалуйста? Шестьдесят шесть. Шестьдесят шесть. Шестьдесят шесть. Я бежал шестьдесят шесть минут. I ran for sixty six minutes. Я бежал шестьдесят шесть минут. Семьдесят семьдесят семь. Семьдесят семь. Его номер квартиры семьдесят семь. His door number is seventy seven. Его номер квартиры семьдесят семь. Восемьдесят восемь. Eighty eight. Восемьдесят восемь. Восемьдесят восемь. Eighty eight. Компании восемьдесят восемь сотрудников. The company has eighty eight employees. В компании восемьдесят восемь сотрудников. Девяносто девять. 
99. Его дедушке 99 лет. His grandfather is 99 years old. Его дедушке 99 лет. 100. 100. 100. 100. 100. Он прожил 100 лет. He has lived 100 years. Он прожил 100 лет. Гостиная. Living room. Гостиная. Гостиная. Living room. Давай выпьем чаю в гостиной. Let's have some tea in the living room. Давай выпьем чаю в гостиной. Столовая. Dining room. Столовая. Столовая. Dining room. Я люблю есть в столовой. I like to eat in the dining room. Я люблю есть в столовой. Коридор. Hallway. Коридор. Коридор. Hallway. Не бегайте по коридорам. Don't run in the hallways. Не бегайте по коридорам. Квартира. Apartment. Квартира. Квартира. Apartment. На каком этаже твоя квартира? Which floor is your apartment? На каком этаже твоя квартира? Дом. House. Дом. Дом. House. Дом, разделенный пополам, не выстоит. A house divided against itself cannot stand. Дом, разделенный пополам, не выстоит. Упражнение. Exercise. Упражнение. Упражнение. Exercise. Женщина делала упражнения на полу. A woman exercised on the floor. Женщина делала упражнения на полу. Открыть. Open. Открыть. Открыть. Open. Можешь открыть дверь? Can you open the door? Можешь открыть дверь. Послушать. Listen. Послушать. Послушать. Listen. В этом баре можно послушать отличную джазовую группу. You can listen to a great jazz band in this bar. В этом баре 
можно послушать отличную джазовую группу. День рождения. Birthday. День рождения. День рождения. Birthday. Когда твой день рождения? When is your birthday? Когда твой день рождения? Выйти на пенсию. Retire. Выйти на пенсию. Выйти на пенсию. Retire. Мой отец собирается выйти на пенсию в следующем году. My father is going to retire next year. Мой отец собирается выйти на пенсию в следующем году. Well done! In this lesson, you expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at RussianPod101.com to get access to the full list of vocabulary you need for daily live conversations. You'll also get example sentences, custom flashcard decks, and more learning resources. See you next time! Пока, пока! Hi, everybody! Всем привет! It's me, Katusha. Today, our topic for RussianPod101.com will be... 10 phrases to use when you're angry. I'm so angry. <laughs> Let's see how it sounds in Russian. Это не твое дело. It's none of your business. Это не твое дело. It's none of your business. Got it? Зачем ты купила это дорогое платье? Это не твое дело. Why did you buy this expensive dress? It's none of your business. Заткнись. Shut up. Заткнись. Shut up. What kind of example shall I bring here, guys? <laughs> Ты пьян. Заткнись. You're drunk. Shut up. <laughs> Оставь меня в покое. Leave me alone. Оставь меня в покое. Leave me alone. Ну, пупсик, чего ты дуешься? Ну, иди сюда. Оставь меня в покое. Сказала. <laughs> I said leave me alone. Ты шутишь, что ли? Are you kidding me? Ты шутишь, что ли? Are you kidding me? Unbelievable. Hey, babe, can you share chocolate with me? Just a little piece, please. Are you kidding me? No way. Ты шутишь, что ли? Мне все равно. Whatever. Мне все равно. Whatever. Извините, который час? Мне все равно. Excuse me, what time is it? Whatever. Хватит уже. Cut it out. Хватит уже. Хватит. Cut it out. Cut it out. Все, все, я поняла. Хватит уже. Окей, okay, окей, okay, I got it. Cut it out. Я не хочу с тобой разговаривать. I don't want to talk to you. Я не хочу с тобой разговаривать. I don't want to talk to you. 
Катя, Катя, я не хочу с тобой разговаривать. Эй, Катюша, Катюша, come on. I don't want to talk to you. Especially in Russian. Я расстроен. I'm upset. Я расстроен. Masculine. Я расстроена. Feminine. I'm upset. Я только что потеряла свой телефон. Я так расстроена, я так расстроена. I just lost my phone. I'm so upset. I'm so upset. И что? So what? И что? So what? Эй, я первый в очереди. И что? Hey, you cut me in line. So what? Да что ты о себе возомнил? Who do you think you are? Да что ты о себе возомнил? Who do you think you are? Извините, клуб переполнен. Да что ты о себе возомнил? Sorry, club is full. Hey, who do you think you are? So our topic was 10 phrases to use when you're angry and me, angry Katusha. I hope you enjoyed it so much. Don't forget to leave your comments on RussianPod101.com. Пока-пока! Did you download your free PDF cheat sheets yet? These conversation cheat sheets are an easy way to speak more because you get cheat sheets for conversational topics like the weather, family, hobbies, and much more. And inside, you'll learn common questions and answers that you'd use in conversations, as well as tons of vocabulary. Don't miss out on this free gift. Click the link in the description to get access. Hi everyone, this is me, Katusha, with you and RussianPod101.com. So today we're gonna be talking about 10 ways how to remember words. So my 10 suggestions to you how to deal with Russian uh, and make it easier to remember Russian words. Prepare yourself. It's not going to be easy to <laughs> repeat these sentences because they're a little bit big, but I will help you to deal with it. So let's begin. Читая как можно больше, особенно газеты, я запоминаю слова. Reading as much as possible, especially newspapers, helps me to remember words. You know, they say if you can read a, a newspaper of the language you're learning, it means you're getting closer to being native level. So if you can understand just a little bit, because um, the reading newspaper is much harder than reading any other literature. So newspapers could actually help you deepen your knowledge of the language you're trying to learn. Я говорю как можно чаще с носителями языка. I speak as often as possible with native speakers. I talk to myself in a mirror. <laughs> Maybe find some coffee conversations with like a language exchange with someone. So you can meet native speakers of the language, like in our case is Russian. Я изучаю корни слов и как различные слова связаны друг с другом. I learn about the roots of words and how different words are connected to each other. It may help you to understand where the word is coming from and sometimes we have one word that could be uh, the main for creating another word. So, of course, it could be easier for you. And especially we have many words from other languages and so knowing those words could also help you speak Russian more fluent. Я произношу слова вслух, чтобы я мог их услышать. I say words out loud so I could hear myself. For example, when you hear me speaking, if you put me on a pause and try to repeat after me and say it out loud, you can see the difference as you say it and I say it, so it makes you closer 
to, to the native pronunciation. So please try that, even if it looks ridiculous and you're staring at yourself in the mirror. Я слушаю песни и запоминаю слова. I listen to songs and I memorize lyrics. Yes, it's one, it's one an easy way to learn traditional uh, like song. First of all, you learn culture of the language you're learning because in songs there are a lot of things what people of that country are thinking about and they want to say out loud to the world, right? So memorizing songs is a very great idea. Я стараюсь думать на русском языке, чтобы это стало естественной частью моего мыслительного процесса. I try to think in Russian so it becomes natural to my thought process. In Russian it sounded really long. I'm sorry, guys. So, of course, this is how you know your language is getting better because you actually start thinking in your not native language. So, if you start thinking to yourself in Russian, Congratulations! You're going great. Я упорно практикуюсь каждый день, разговаривая со своей семьей и собаками, даже несмотря на то, что они меня не понимают. I am persistent in practicing every day by talking to my family and my dogs, even though they don't understand me. Okay, I know this is a crazy idea. <laughs> And you can get a crazy reaction from your family and from your dogs. So yeah, be ready to see very funny faces, very surprised reactions. But if it helps you practice your language, why not? Я использую метод повторения. Читаю, пишу и произношу слова снова и снова. I use repetition method. Reading, writing and speaking words again and again. Of course, if you want to work on your pronunciation, you can do that, but if you write it down, better write down in the combination of other words or like a sentence, so it helps you to understand this word inside the context, so it will be easier for you to remember it. Otherwise, if you just write down one word or say one word out loud, it's not going to connect it with anything else, so you could just easily forget it, I think. So, mm, better use it with some other words or expressions or just sentences. Я пытаюсь использовать новое слово в простом предложении, поэтому я учу целые фразы, а не только слова. I try to use a new word in a simple sentence, so I learn whole phrases, not just individual words. This is what I just mentioned in a previous example, I think. So yes, try learning as a whole phrase instead of just a word. It will help you definitely. Я стараюсь использовать язык регулярно в повседневной жизни. I try to use the language regularly in daily life. Yeah, so try from hello, from how are you, как дела, привет, хорошо, я тоже, а ты, and you. So uh, you can keep saying same things and then you will see how naturally it goes out by itself. So it was 10 ways to remember words and me, Katusha, trying hard to help you and remember Russian words. So, stick to our advice and don't forget to subscribe. Talk to you later. Пока -пока. Katisha and you are gonna be discussing 15 happy words. Let's check it out. Счастливый. Happy. Счастливый. Happy. Счастливый. There is actually CH, well, Russian CH, SCH, but it sounds more like SH. SH. So you say счастливый. Happy! My friend is happy to meet me. Мой друг счастлив меня встретить. Добрый. Kind. Добрый. Kind. Oh, you're so kind. Ой, ты такой добрый. You're so kind to me. Ты так ко мне добра. Thank you, спасибо. 
замечательный. Great. Замечательный. Great. It's a bit longer than English version. You just say great here, great there. But in Russian, no, you use it only something is really great. So you say, замечательно, замечательный. Today is a great day. Сегодня замечательный день. Красивый. Beautiful. Красивый. Beautiful. So make someone happy and tell them they're beautiful. Oh. Она такая красивая. She's so beautiful. Or these flowers are so beautiful. Эти цветы такие красивые. Нравится. To like. Нравится. Like. I like to hang out with you. Мне нравится гулять с тобой. Мне нравится с тобой гулять. Смешной. Funny. Смешной. Funny. Ты такой смешной. You're so funny. Ты такой смешной. Or, in case of a girl, ты такая смешная. You're so funny, girl. Энергичный. Lively. Energetic. Энергия is energy. Your friend is so energetic. Твой друг такой энергичный. Like, maybe you're like looking at him and he's dancing three hours straight and you're like... Твой друг такой энергичный. Your friend is so energetic. Wow. Full of energy. Восторженный. Excited. Восторженный. Excited. I was so excited to watch you dance. Я была восторжена, когда увидела, как ты танцуешь. I was so excited when I saw you dancing. Я была восторжена твоим танцем. Позитивный. Positive. Позитивный. Positive. I try to stay positive all the time. Я стараюсь быть позитивной все время. Я стараюсь быть позитивной постоянно. Расслабленный. Relaxed. Расслабленный. Relaxed. I'm very relaxed right now. Я очень расслаблен сейчас. Somebody's giving me a massage, you can say, Oh, I'm so relaxed. Я так расслаблен. Сердечный. Warm. Сердечный. Warm personality. Somebody is good to you. Он очень сердечный. Его поступки очень сердечные. Means uh, he does everything from, from the heart, from the bottom of the heart to you, for you. It's very, very kind and nice word and I think you should use it. You should remember it. <laughs> Смеяться. To laugh. Смеяться. To laugh. Oh my god! <laughs> ah, you make me laugh. Ты заставляешь меня смеяться. You make me laugh so much. Ты меня заставляешь так смеяться. Довольный. Satisfied. Satisfied. Довольный. I'm so satisfied with my test results. Я так довольна результатами своего экзамена. Любить. To love. Любить. To love. I love jogging in the mornings. Я люблю бегать по утрам. Заботливый. Caring. Заботливый. Caring. Забота is a care. Somebody's care. Забота. Uh, my boyfriend is very caring. Мой парень очень заботливый. It's very nice. Okay, so today it was 15 happy words. For you in Russian and me, Katusha. Hope you could remember some and use it in your daily life. So don't forget to subscribe and see you later. Пока, пока. In this video, you learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Russian. Hi, everybody. My name is Katya. Welcome to the 800 core Russian words and phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Russian. But there is a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we'll include the previous lessons at the end. So after you've learned the new words and phrases, stick around and review what you've learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. 
You can also get the full list right now at RussianPod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally master Russian. Okay, let's get started. First is Shesliwy. Happy. Shesliwy. Shesliwy. Happy. Счастливого Нового года! Have a happy new year! Счастливого Нового года! Грустно! Sad! Грустно! Грустно! Sad! На улице дождь, и мне очень грустно. It's raining outside, and I'm very sad. На улице дождь, и мне очень грустно. Сердитый. Angry. Сердитый. Сердитый. Angry. Мой отец сердит на меня. My father is angry with me. Мой отец сердит на меня. Одежда. Clothing. Одежда. Одежда. Clothing. Слои одежды. Layers of clothing. Слои одежды. Туфля. Шу. Туфля. Туфля. Шу. Мы померили туфли. We have tried on the shoes. Мы померили туфли. Носок. Сок. Носок. Носок. Сок. Сушить носки. Dry your socks. Сушить носки. Нижнее белье. Underwear. Нижнее белье. Нижнее белье. Underwear. Носки и нижнее белье лежат в верхнем ящике моего шкафа. My socks and underwear are in the top drawer of my dresser. Носки и нижнее белье лежат в верхнем ящике моего шкафа. Поговорить. Talk. Поговорить. Поговорить. Talk. Могу я поговорить с Катей? May I talk to Katya? Могу я поговорить с Катей? Давать. Give. Давать. Давать. Give. Дайте мне, пожалуйста. Give me, please. Дайте мне, пожалуйста. Низкий. Low. Низкий. 
низкий. Low. У меня низкий уровень сахара в крови. My sugar levels are low. У меня низкий уровень сахара в крови. Высокий. High. Высокий. Высокий. Hi. Эта компания производит изделия из стекла высокого качества. This company produces high quality products made of glass. Эта компания производит изделия из стекла высокого качества. Фрукт. 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 Я ем мало овощей и фруктов. I eat few fruits and vegetables. Я ем мало овощей и фруктов. Осьминог. Октопус. Осьминог. Осьминог. Октопус. Осьминог плавает в океане. The octopus is swimming in the ocean. Осьминог плавает в океане. Акула. Shark. Акула. Акула. Shark. Большая белая акула. Great white shark. Большая Белая акула. Кит. Whale. Кит. Кит. Whale. Раз в жизни я бы хотела увидеть кита своими собственными глазами. Once in my lifetime, I would love to see a whale with my own eyes. Раз в жизни я бы хотела увидеть кита своими собственными глазами. Облачно. Cloudy. Облачно. Облачно. Cloudy. Сегодня облачно. Today is cloudy. Сегодня облачно. Прохладный. Cool. Прохладный. Прохладный. Cool. С моря дул прохладный бриз. A cool breeze was blowing from the sea. С моря дул прохладный бриз. Огурец. Cucumber. Огурец. Огурец. Cucumber. Она знает много рецептов заготовки огурцов и помидоров на зиму. She knows a lot of recipes for conservation of cucumber and tomatoes for winter. Она знает много рецептов заготовки огурцов и помидоров на зиму. Болгарский перец. 
bell pepper. Bulgarski perets. Bulgarski perets. Bell pepper. Самый распространенный болгарский перец – зеленый, красный и желтый. The most common bell peppers are green, red and yellow. Самый распространенный болгарский перец – зеленый, красный и желтый. Брокколи. 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 Говорят, брокколи предотвращает рак. Брокколи is said to prevent cancer. Говорят, брокколи предотвращает рак. Well done! In this lesson, you expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at RussianPod101.com to get access to the full list of vocabulary you need for daily live conversations. You'll also get example sentences, custom flashcards decks, and more learning resources. See you next time! Пока -пока. До свидания! Now that you're finished with this lesson, don't forget, as a free bonus, you get over 30 conversation cheat sheets, but only if you sign up via the link in the description. You'll learn how to have flowing conversations and how to answer the most common questions. You can also print out these colorful cheat sheets to keep as physical study material. So don't miss out on this free gift. Click the link in the description and sign up for a free lifetime account to get your PDF cheat sheets. Hello, everyone. My name is Katusha. I will be with you today for Russian Weekly Words. We're going to start together our first lesson, and it's very exciting! I don't know what's going to be there, and I don't know any words I'm going to teach you from now on, but um, let's have a look. Let me check. <laughs> Takes a bit a long time. Uh -huh. Hobbies. Увлечение. Играть на музыкальном инструменте. Play a musical instrument. Oh, my childhood, I was dreaming to play piano. I always wanted to play a musical instrument. Я всегда хотела сыграть на музыкальном инструменте. We're good? Okay, something about the play again. No, we're, we're moving to sports right now. I like watching sports. Olympic Games, I'm waiting for it. Катание на коньках. Ice skating. Uh, recently, Japan is getting very strong in it, but of course, Russia. To glide on skates, I would say, if we translate it like from word to word, we're ice skating. Мы катаемся на коньках. Let's go ice skating tonight. On our sleepy iPad. Рисовать. Hmm, draw. Can you draw? I can draw a little bit on the napkin when I'm in a cafe or something like that in a very artistic way of drawing. I would like to draw something. Я бы хотела что-нибудь нарисовать. Я бы хотела что-нибудь нарисовать. Would you like to draw something? Next one maybe guys will be interested in. Рыбачить. Fishing, right? Why not? It's summer, the weather is great. We can just go outside, pull a tent out and just stay and go to the river and do fishing and fish, fish, fish. <laughs> we can cook the fish later. Рыбачить is a verb and the noun is рыба, fish. I go fishing from now on. Прямо сейчас я иду рыбачить. You got it? The next one is my favorite. Танец. It's dancing. To dance, to dance. Танцевать. Dance. To dance. Let's go to club to dance. Yay! Пошли в клуб танцевать. Outside in the parking, do some break dancing. Next time you can do some cool movements, you can say it in Russian. Танцевать. I like dancing. Я люблю танцевать. Oh no! 
it says the end. For now, it's just the first lesson is over. Nice talking to you. Okay, I'll see you next time. It was Katusha with you. Bye. It's like tiger, you know, like lion. Rrr. It's me, Katisha, again with you, and are you ready for the 10 hardest words to pronounce? 10 hardest words to pronounce it. Russian pronunciation is not easy, so are you ready for the challenge? Now, let's begin. Split. Come out to the surface. Split. Split. <laughs> I bet you can't say that. I guess uh, what's difficult about this uh, sound is that V and S come together, one after the other. V split. If a split is swimming or floating, so something comes out from inside the water to the top, to the surface. So V split. Split. Okay? Now you can say this word. Dnyom. In the afternoon. Well, here you have a hard D, uh, changing with the soft yo, so it sounds like днём. I prefer having my breakfast in the early afternoon. Я предпочитаю завтракать рано днём. Достопримечательность. Attraction. Достопримечательность. For example, when you're going to Paris or somewhere, you can see many different... Um, Tourist attraction. Let's make a sentence. Eiffel Tower is one of the tourist attractions. Eiffelivaya Bashnya, одна из туристических достопримечательностей. Кремль, главная туристическая достопримечательность Москвы. Крем is the main tourist attractions in Moscow. <laughs> Did it sound too long? Well, sorry. That's Russian, guys. Yozhik, hedgehog. Ёжик. Ёжик. Этот ёжик такой милый. This hedgehog is so cute. Здравствуйте. Hello. Здравствуйте. Actually, in the middle of the word, there is a letter V. You can see in the writing form. But when you say it, it disappears. So, instead of Здравствуйте, we just say Здравствуйте. When you see someone for the first time or someone you don't know, you can say Здравствуйте, меня зовут Катя. Hello, my name is Katya. Пожалуйста. Please. Пожалуйста. Uh, this word is usually uh, used in the beginning or in the end uh, of the sentence. So if you want to ask for something, you can say Give me the receipt, please. Дайте мне чек. Пожалуйста. Преподаватель. Teacher. Преподаватель. Well, uh, basically, teaching is преподавание. Or to teach someone is преподавать. Basically, to bring your knowledge to someone. My teacher was late to the class today. Сегодня мой преподаватель опоздал на урок. Пять. Five. Пять. Пять. Give me five. Дай мне пять. Ей! <laughs> Чебурашка. 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 It's a made up word for the animation character. For example, I used to love watching Чебурашка. Когда я была маленькая, я обожала смотреть Чебурашку. Шишка. Пайнком. Шишка. Well, how shall I explain this? It's like when you're trying whistling, but you can, so you say shh. You know, and then you just put another she after, so shishka. <laughs> Maybe it helps you. Shishka. Uh, there were many pine cones uh, in the forest. Glisu bula mnoga shishak. Well, I'm happy you stayed with me, Katisha, and uh, and with ten hardest words to pronounce it in Russian. Hope you could manage the challenge, and I'll see you again next time. Stick to us. And don't forget to subscribe. Пока, пока.
Привет всем! Hi everyone, and I'm Katusha, and today we're gonna talk about 10 lines you need for introducing yourself. Та -да 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 -да! Let's begin! Меня зовут Катюша. My name is Катюша. Меня зовут. My name is. So, when you meet someone for the first time, as we probably talked about it before, you say your name. We can practice. Hi, my name is Katusha. What's your name? Oh, nice to meet you. Мне лет. I am years old. Uh, maybe you don't really want to discuss your age, but if somebody asks you, you should answer, for example, 18. Мне 18 лет. How old are you? Сколько тебе лет? I'm 102 years old. Мне 102 года. Be careful with Russian because as you just noticed, I didn't say лет, but I said года. Years can differ from which, which numbers do you use. It depends on which uh, age you say. So be careful. <laughs> Tricky Russian, yay! Мне очень нравится слушать музыку. I like listening to music. So I enjoy or I like is мне нравится. And then you can say what you like. I enjoy playing computer. Мне нравится играть на компьютере. I like uh, going out. Мне нравится ходить по клубам. I like shopping. Мне нравится ходить по магазинам. Or, I like you. Ты мне нравишься. Одно из моих хобби чтения. One of my hobbies is reading. Or you can say, my hobby is... Мое хобби – рисовать. My hobby is to draw. Мое хобби – икибана. Привет! Приятно познакомиться! Hi, nice to meet you! Привет! Я Катюша. Приятно познакомиться. So, you should try saying, you say hello, привет. And then you say your name, and then nice to meet you. Приятно познакомиться. The friendly you will be ты, and the polite you will be вы. So, when you want to emphasize on someone being friendly, and you just met, you say приятно с тобой познакомиться. Nice to meet you as friendly. And nice to meet you as polite will be приятно с вами познакомиться. Okay, so just a small uh, little touch for you. Hope it's gonna be useful. Я из Москвы. I'm from Moscow. Я из Америки. I'm from America. Я из России. I am from Russia. Я изучаю русский в течение года. I've been learning Russian for a year. Я изучаю русский в течение года. Okay, how long have you been studying Russian, huh? I hope you're progressing with me. Я учитель. I'm a teacher. Я твой учитель. Or you can say a feminine way. Я твоя учительница. Я учительница. Я учу русский на RussianPod101.com. I am learning Russian on RussianPod101.com. Yes, I said it. So you're proud. You just say, oh, I am learning Russian on RussianPod101.com. Of course. Чем ты занимаешься? What do you do? Чем ты занимаешься? Hi, what do you do? Привет, чем ты занимаешься? Uh, what do you do can mean uh, what are you doing now, right now? Like you come back home and say, oh, what are you doing kind of thing. Uh, or you can just say like you're asking someone what kind of job uh, work they're doing in their life. So it can be useful. Okay, so it was 10 lines. You'll need to introduce yourself. So I hope you liked it and please leave me your comments. Nice meeting you, and uh, don't forget to subscribe!
Пока-пока. Stick it to my skin. I feel like I'm in the sauna. How are your Russian listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Мужчина и женщина смотрят на меню в ресторане. Что мужчина заказал? Что бы вы хотели заказать? Эта пицца выглядит аппетитно. Я возьму ее. Я ел пиццу вчера, так что... Правда? Тогда как насчет гамбургера? Звучит неплохо. Я закажу его. Что мужчина заказал? Мужчина и женщина смотрят на меню в ресторане. Что мужчина заказал? Что бы вы хотели заказать? Эта пицца выглядит аппетитно. Я возьму ее. Я ел пиццу вчера, так что... Правда? Тогда как насчет гамбургера? Звучит неплохо. Я закажу его. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. Hi everybody, this is Katusha from RussianPod101.com. Do you know how to say thank you in Russian? In this lesson, you learn three different ways to say thank you and how to respond. Let's start with the easiest one. Спасибо. Спасибо. It means thank you. If you want to show you really appreciate something, you just add большое. Большое спасибо. Большое спасибо. It means thank you so much. The word большое means big, so большое спасибо literally means big thanks. To sound like a pro, you can also add why you are thankful. For example, Большое спасибо за помощь. Thank you very much for your help. What if you want to show your appreciation for something in a more formal way? Here is how you can say it. Спасибо за вашу заботу. Спасибо за вашу заботу. It means thank you for your kindness. Now you know three different ways to say thank you in Russian. But how do you respond if someone thanks you? If someone thanks you in Russian, simply say пожалуйста. It means you're welcome. Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. Listen to the expressions and repeat after me. Thank you. Спасибо. Спасибо. Thank you so much. Большое спасибо. Большое спасибо. Thank you for your kindness. Спасибо за вашу заботу. Спасибо за вашу заботу. And to respond, just say Пожалуйста. Пожалуйста. Well done! When saying thank you in Russian, body language is very important. In any case, it's very important that your thanks be accompanied with a smile and direct eye contact. You just learned three different ways to say thank you and how to respond in Russian. And if you really want to become fluent and speak Russian from the very first lesson, 
go to RussianPod101.com. I'll see you next time. Пока, пока. Hi everyone. Welcome to the ultimate Russian pronunciation guide. In this lesson, you'll learn all 13 Russian vowel sounds. By learning all of these sounds, you'll be able to pronounce any vowel that could possibly appear in Russian. Are you ready? Then let's get started. There are a total of 13 vowel sounds in Russian, all of which can be broken down into three categories, hard indicating, soft indicating, and unstressed vowel sounds. First, let's take a look at all five hard indicating vowel sounds. The first vowel is A, Da, Atom, Trava. This vowel sound is identical to the A in far. Be sure to lower your jaw and allow the mouth to open completely. A, A. Ah. Ah. The next vowel is e. Eta. Ekran. Jest. This vowel sound is identical to the e in education. E. 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 Eh. The next vowel is U, ты, мы, язык. Raise the middle part of your tongue all the way to the roof of your mouth until there's only a tiny opening for air to travel through. The back of the tongue should be flat against the back roof of the mouth so that the tongue is tense. Try to create a narrow channel from the base of the throat all the way to the roof of the mouth. Your lips should remain neutral. Listen to Katya. U. 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 The next vowel is O. On. Oblaka. Овощи. This vowel sound is very similar to the O in OR. Exaggerating the lip rounding may also help with the pronunciation of this sound. О. 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 The final hard indicating vowel is У. Удочка. Муж. Пуля. This vowel sound is identical to the U in true. Be sure to raise the back part of your tongue all the way up against the back roof of your mouth. Exaggerating your lip rounding may also help with the pronunciation of this sound. У. 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 You just learned five hard indicating vowel sounds. Now let's move on to soft indicating vowel sounds. Я. Яблоко. Ягода. Яхта. This is identical to the yaw sound in yard. Be sure to lower your jaw and allow your mouth to open completely. Я. Я. Yeah. Yeah. The next vowel is Ye. Yest. Yevra. Yezdit. It sounds very similar to the Y-E in year. Ye. Yeah. Ye. Yeah. Ye. Yeah. Ye. Yeah. The next vowel is E. Imia. 
Pit. She. It's identical to the double E sound in C. E. 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 The next vowel is Yo. Tiotia. Actor. Svayo. It sounds very similar to the Y O in your. Yo. 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 The final soft indicating vowel is you. Yuzhny. Yubka. Yunasha. It sounds very similar to you. Be sure to raise the back part of your tongue all the way up against the back roof of your mouth. Exaggerating your lip rounding may also help with the pronunciation of this sound. You. 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 Well done. You've learned all the hard and soft indicating vowels in Russian. The final three vowel sounds are sounds that are only produced when certain vowels are in unstressed syllables. The first vowel sound that occurs in unstressed syllables is... Ah. Uh. Rasia. Malako. Vada. This is similar to the U in Russell. The key part here is to pronounce it quickly. Ah. 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 The next vowel sound is Ah. Oblaka. Novaya. Koja. It's identical to the A in about. When practicing, make sure you pronounce it about instead of about. Ah. 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 The final sound that occurs in unstressed syllables and the final vowel sound for this lesson is. Ye. Yeda. Yezik. Dereva. It's identical to the YI in yippy. The key part here is to pronounce it quickly. Ye. 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 Well done! You've just learned all 13 vowel sounds in Russian. With these sounds, you can pronounce any vowel that could possibly appear in the Russian language. Isn't that great? Which vowel sound was the most difficult for you to pronounce? Let us know in the comments. In the next lesson, you'll start learning consonant sounds. See you in the next Ultimate Russian Pronunciation Guide lesson. Hi, welcome to Introduction to Russian. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by... Hi everyone, I'm Katya. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Russian pronunciation. Russian pronunciation is arguably easier to learn than English. Consider the following English words. The first word is pronounced colonel, not colonel. The second word is pronounced arise. Adding an N, however, doesn't give you arisen, but arisen. The last word is pronounced eight, but adding an H doesn't give you hate. Instead, it becomes height. English is notorious for being a difficult language to learn, and it can be very frustrating for learners due to the fact that its pronunciation rules often don't make a lot of sense. Russian, on the other hand, can seem like a blessing when compared to English. Dub. Vada. Dom. Russian is primarily pronounced as it's spelled. There are some exceptions. 
but they're governed by more defined rules compared to English. Even loan words, like the greeting you learned in the previous lesson, are largely pronounced as written. Здравствуйте! All you need to learn now, then, are the sounds of Russian. There are many vowel and consonant sounds in Russian. Luckily, Russian puts its letters into two main categories of sounds, hard and soft. There are a total of 10 vowels in Russian, and they're divided equally. There are five hard vowels, which are a little similar to English. A, E, U, O, U. And five soft vowels. These are vowels that have a netted glide or Y-like quality, making them sound softer. Ya, Ye, I, Yo, You. Please note, though, that the number of vowel sounds do not equal the number of vowel letters. There are actually more vowel sounds than represented by letters. Similar to vowels, consonant sounds can also be hard or soft. B, B, V, V, D, D, Z, Z. Unlike vowels, though, Consonants aren't differentiated into separate letters based on their hardness or softness alone. A single consonant letter is used to represent two sounds, one hard m, and one soft. M. This is because Russian is actually read in blocks. We use the closest vowel which comes after the consonant to indicate whether to pronounce the consonant hard or soft. If the consonant is followed by a hard vowel, then the consonant is also pronounced hard. Ma, masla. On the other hand, if the consonant is followed by a soft vowel, then the consonant is also pronounced soft. Mia, miasa. The many contrasts between hard and soft consonant and vowels is what gives Russian its distinct gliding sound. We saw before how a relationship exists between letters and sounds based on their hardness. Voicing is another quality that's important to be aware of when learning Russian pronunciation. Voicing simply refers to whether or not your vocal cords are vibrating or not vibrating. English has voiced pairs as well. Consider the following letters. P, B, T, D, K, G. Do you notice the relationship between these letters? The letters in each pair are pronounced exactly the same, the only difference being that one requires your vocal cords to vibrate and the other to not vibrate. Sounds that do not require vibration of the vocal cords, like all the ones on the left-hand side, are considered voiceless, while sounds that do require vibration of the vocal cords, like all the ones on the right-hand side, are considered voiced. Consider the following example in Russian. This letter is pronounced G. But this word here isn't pronounced bog, but bog. Notice how the letter g is written, which is a voiced letter, but is actually pronounced as the letter k, a voiceless letter. So what ended up happening? The final consonant is a voiced consonant, but when the word is being pronounced, the letter is actually read using the voiceless counterpart instead. This occurs to all words that end in the final consonant in Russian. Final consonants are pronounced voiceless. So despite what's written, always pronounce the final consonant in Russian using the voiceless version. B, zub, z, bez. The key to perfecting Russian pronunciation is to master hard and soft pairs, and voiced pairs. Unlike many other languages, Russian pronunciation is heavily affected by sounds that are adjacent to each other, often adopting the sound qualities of the letters that surround them. Once you understand the concept and the relationship between hard and soft pairs and voiced pairs, Russian pronunciation actually becomes quite logical and easy to learn. Okay, let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, we introduce you to some important concepts for learning Russian pronunciation. 
you learned that there are hard and soft pairs in Russian, about voiced pairs in Russian, and that letters can adopt these sound qualities. If you're interested in learning more about Russian pronunciation, check out the entire course we created named The Ultimate Guide to Russian Pronunciation. In that course, we cover and break down every single sound in the Russian language, showing you mouth and tongue positioning and giving you tips to help you perfect your Russian pronunciation. In the next lesson, we'll introduce you to the basics of Russian grammar, where you'll learn about Russian word order and how to build basic phrases in Russian. See you in the next lesson. Bye! Bye! In this video, you learn 20 of the most common words and phrases in Russian. Hi everybody, my name is Katya. Welcome to the 800 core Russian words and phrases video series. This series will teach you the 800 most common words and phrases in Russian. But there is a twist. With each new lesson in this series, we'll include the previous lessons at the end. So after you've learned the new words and phrases, stick around and review what you've learned in previous lessons. Reviewing is one of the most important parts of learning a language. You can also get the full list right now at RussianPod101.com. Click the link in the description to access more example sentences, create your own flashcard deck, and finally master Russian. Okay, let's get started! First is... Здравствуйте! Hello! Здравствуйте. Здравствуйте. Hello. Здравствуйте. Вы Марина? Hello. Are you Marina? Здравствуйте. Вы Марина? Извините. Excuse me. Извините. Извините. Excuse me. Извините. Где находится станция метро? Excuse me. Where is the metro station? Извините. Где находится станция метро? Прости меня. I'm sorry. Прости меня. Прости меня. I'm sorry. Прости меня, пожалуйста. Forgive me, please. Прости меня, пожалуйста. Спокойной ночи. Good night. Спокойной ночи. Спокойной ночи. Good night. Я пойду спать. Спокойной ночи. I'm going to bed. Good night. Я пойду спать. Спокойной ночи. Приятно познакомиться. Nice to meet you. Приятно познакомиться. Приятно познакомиться. Nice to meet you. Приятно познакомиться, сэр. Nice to meet you, сэр. Приятно познакомиться, сэр. Как дела? How are you? Как дела? Как дела? How are you? Давно не виделись. Как дела? It's been a long time. How are you? Давно не виделись. Как дела? Да. Yes. Да. 
Да. Yes. Ты купил хлеб? Да. Отлично. Did you buy bread? Yes. Excellent. Ты купил хлеб? Да. Отлично. Нет. No. Нет. Нет. No. Знак нет. No sign. Знак нет. Спасибо. Thank you. Спасибо. Спасибо. Thank you. Спасибо, но... Thank you, but... Uh... Спасибо, но... Меня зовут... I'm... Меня зовут... Меня зовут... I'm... Меня зовут Катя. I'm Катя. Меня зовут Катя. До свидания. Goodbye. До свидания. До свидания. Goodbye. Спасибо. До свидания. Thank you. Goodbye. Спасибо. До свидания. Плохой. Bad. Плохой. Плохой. Bad. Этот человек плохой. This man is bad. Этот человек плохой. Хороший. Good. Хороший. Хороший. Good. Хорошо для тела. Good for one's body. Хорошо для тела. Симпатичная. Pretty. Симпатичная. Симпатичная. Pretty. Наталья симпатичная и общительная девушка. Наталья is a pretty and sociable girl. Наталья симпатичная и общительная девушка. Гадкий. Ugly. Гадкий. Гадкий. Ugly. Гадкий утенок превратился в прекрасного лебедя. The ugly duckling became a beautiful swan. Гадкий утенок превратился в прекрасного лебедя. Легкий. Easy. Легкий. Легкий. Easy. Эта проблема легкая. This problem is easy. Это проблема легкая. 
трудный. Difficult. Трудный. Трудный. Difficult. Трудная работа. Difficult job. Трудная работа. Близкий. Near. Близкий. Близкий. Near. Близко к городу. Near the city. Близко к городу. Далекий. Far. Далекий. Далекий. Far. Далеко от. Far away. Далеко от. Маленький. Small. Маленький. Маленький. Small. Маленький цыпленок. Small chick. Маленький цыпленок. Well done! In this lesson you expanded your vocabulary and learned 20 new useful words. Click the link in the description and sign up for free at RussianPod101.com to get access to the full list of vocabulary you need for daily live conversations. You'll also get example sentences, custom flashcards decks, and more learning resources. See you next time! Пока-пока! До свидания! Привет всем! Hello everyone! And you are with me, Katusha with 15 questions you should know. Let's see what you should know and could be really useful for you when you are in Russia. Вы когда-нибудь были в России? Have you ever been to Russia? Вы когда-нибудь были в России? Have you ever been to Russia? Где вы живете? Where do you live? Где вы живете? Where do you live? Где вы живете? Где? Where? Вы? Do you? Live? Живете? Где вы работаете? Where do you work? Где вы работаете? Where do you work? If you lost your direction, you can ask, for example, where is the station? Где станция? Где вы учили русский язык? Where did you learn Russian? Где вы учили русский язык? Where did you learn Russian? Где вы учили? Where did you learn? It's a lot of weird questions. <laughs> Где находится туалет? Where is the toilet? Где находится туалет? Where is the toilet? Идите направо. Go to the right. Как вас зовут? What's your name? Как вас зовут? What's your name? My name is Katusha. Меня зовут Катюша. And what's your name? Как дела? How are you? Как дела? How are you? Как дела? Хороша? И я хороша. Спасибо. Как долго вы учите русский язык? How long have you been studying Russian? Um, I've been studying Russian language for three weeks. Я учу русский язык на протяжении трех недель. How long you been studying Russian with me, huh? Какой у вас номер телефона? What's your phone number? Какой у вас номер телефона? What's your phone number? I'm sure you can ask this question a lot. <laughs> um, sorry, I forgot my phone number. Извините, я забыла свой номер телефона. Когда ваш день рождения? When is your birthday? Когда ваш день рождения? When is your birthday? My birthday is soon. Мой день рождения очень скоро. Откуда вы? 
Where are you from? Откуда вы? Where are you from? Or you can also switch and say Вы откуда? You are from where? Откуда вы? Вы откуда? I'm from Russia. And you? Сколько вам лет? How old are you? I'm gonna be 18 soon. Мне скоро будет 18. Что-что? What-what? Что вы сказали? What did you say? Что-что? Like what-what? This you can hear really a lot. Что-что? Что-что? Что вы сказали? What-what? What did you say? Что это? What is it? Что это? What is it? It's a present for you. Это подарок для тебя. Вам это нравится? Do you like this? Вам это нравится? Do you like it? You're choosing flowers. So you can ask, do you like this flower? Тебе нравятся эти цветы? Do you like this movie? Тебе нравится это кино? Okay, 15 questions are done and I hope you can use it next time you're talking to a Russian person or just a tourist, Russian tourist you see somewhere in a cafe. Try contacting and try communicating and don't forget to subscribe, okay? Пока, пока. Bye, bye. We did learn Russian language. The word question doesn't really... Oh. Next language. Uh, next language. <laughs>
aerospace, microelectronics, and much, much more. What about the poetics of the Russian language itself? In the words of the 16th century emperor of Rome, Charles V, I speak to God in Spanish, to friends in French, to my enemies in German, and to women in Italian. And to that, the Russian polymath Mikhail Lomonosov famously added that if he'd known Russian, he could speak to all of the former because Russian has a grandeur of Spanish, the vivacity of French, the strength of German, the gentleness of Italian, and in addition to that, the wealth and brevity of Latin in Greek. Indeed, Russian is one of the most interesting languages in the world. It's the king of Slavic languages. It's been said by language learners that if you learn this language, you can easily learn any other language in the world, no matter how difficult it may seem. Okay then, we've talked about why you should start learning a language and why you should start learning Russian in particular, but how should they get started, Katya? Well, it's as simple as learning your first word in Russian and building up from there. The good news, though, is that you already know some Russian. Respect. Fail. Good. As you can see, Russian is much closer to English than it seems initially, because it has had ties to English and English expressions for some 200 years. Let's teach you something that you might not know. Здравствуйте. This is a common Russian greeting that roughly translates to hello or how are you? Здравствуйте. That's a useful phrase. Can you explain a little bit about what these symbols are, though? Sure. Much like how English uses the Latin script in its writing, Russian uses another type of script called the Cyrillic script. And those symbols are actually letters of the Russian alphabet. And similar to English, one letter usually corresponds to one sound in Russian. We'll introduce you to the writing system in episode 4 of this series. For now, let's put up some Roman transcriptions so you can follow along. Здравствуйте. Repeat after Katya. Здравствуйте. Здравствуйте. Russian has a lot of consonant clusters like the ones found in this greeting, but don't let that intimidate you. Pronounce each consonant going from one to the next without adding any extra vowel sounds. Start off slowly and read them in the correct order. Здравствуйте. 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 We can also abbreviate this phrase to make it more casual. Здравствуй. Just remove the last syllable te to say hello casually to a friend or relative. Здравствуй. Здравствуй. Well done. Now you know how to greet someone in Russian. We've covered a lot of things already, so why don't we wrap up the first lesson and recap on what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that studying another language has many benefits, such as providing new job and business opportunities. Russian is spoken by hundreds of millions of people worldwide and is one of the official languages of the United Nations. And to greet someone in Russian, it's... Здравствуйте! In the next lesson, we're going to demystify Russian pronunciation by taking a look at the sounds of Russian, so be sure to watch the next video. See you in the next lesson! Bye! Bye! Привет всем! С вами Светлана. Hi everybody, I'm Светлана. Welcome to RussianPod101.com. Русский язык за три минуты. The fastest, easiest and the most fun way to learn Russian. In the last lesson, we learned how to count in Russian. I hope you spend some time practicing the numbers, because they will come in handy today. Now we are going to learn how to go shopping in Russia. So you see something you like and you want to ask the shop assistant how much it is. The first thing to say is извините. Do you remember the meaning? Right. Excuse me. Извините, сколько это стоит? Извините, сколько это стоит? Let's break it down to work out the meaning of these new words. Сколько means how much or how many. As you can see, it can be used both with countable nouns, like people, and uncountable nouns, like time. The next word is это, which means this or that. And the last one is стоит, cost. If you want to be more specific when asking how much is this, 
and refer to a certain type of object. You just need to drop the word это and place the object after the verb стоит. For example, сколько стоит хлеб? How much is the bread? Or сколько стоит мороженое? How much is the ice cream? But remember that Russian verbs change according to the noun. In this case, we have to be careful about using the nouns in plural and singular forms. For example, if we use the noun candies, which is plural, the verb will change. Извините, сколько стоят конфеты? Excuse me, how much are the candies? Извините, сколько стоят конфеты? As you might already know, the national currency in Russia is rubles. Рубль or рубли in the plural. So now let's hear the shop assistant's answer. He or she could answer by saying Хлеб стоит 20 рублей. Мороженое стоит 15 рублей. Or конфеты стоят 50 рублей. Here comes our numbers. I'm sure you remember them and can easily understand the answer. Great job! Now it's time for Svetlana's tips. The prices in big shopping malls and department stores are mostly fixed. These shops may have some seasonal discounts or campaigns. But the prices in Russian markets, rynak or bazaar, are very flexible. They really depend on your speaking and bargaining skills. People at these places are generally very open and friendly, and usually more than happy to find the most appropriate price to please both sides. He or she might even invite you in to have a drink. But always be aware of pickpockets and thieves. There are a lot of them in Russian markets. Do you know how to use Russian currency? We're going to learn how to do this and much more in the next lesson. I will see you soon in our next Ruski Zig za 3 minute lesson. Пока, пока. Hi everybody, my name is Katusha and I'm here with you for top 25 Russian nouns. Now let's begin. Человек. Man. Человек. The tricky thing with this word is that in plural it changes completely. So one man is человек and many men is люди. Have you seen this man? Вы видели этого человека? Вы видели этого человека? Год. Year. The year has passed so quickly. Год пролетел так быстро. Год пролетел так быстро. Время. Time. This noun we're gonna use a lot of times. Every time you want to know what time it is now. So, excuse me, what time is it now? Извините, который сейчас час? Который сейчас время? Again, when you ask for a time, you can use two synonym words, nouns in Russian, which is время, as we just learned, and час, literally means hour. Рука, hand. Рука, hand. One hand, two hands, руки. Give me your hand. Дай мне свою руку. Дай мне свою руку. Имя, name. What's your name? Как тебя зовут? Как тебя зовут? How people call you literally, which means by name. I hope it's not confusing for you. <laughs> Раз. Time. When counted. Uh, when we're counting something. One time, two times, three times. Сколько раз ты ходишь в зал? How many times do you go to a gym? Деньги. Money. In Russia, we show this from money, деньги. So if you see somebody showing you the sign, they, it means they want some money from you. Give me some money. Дай мне деньги. Дай мне деньги. Жизнь. Life. Life is so good. Жизнь прекрасна. You can use that when you feel good, when you feel happy. So you can say, жизнь Прекрасно. Life is good. День. Day. What a great day. 
Какой прекрасный день! What day is it today? Какой сегодня день? Голова. Head. Голова. One head is good, but two is better. Одна голова хорошо, а две лучше. Одна голова хорошо, а две лучше. Друг. Friend. Hello, my friend! Здравствуй, мой дорогой друг! Дом. Home. Welcome to my home. Добро пожаловать в мой дом. Добро пожаловать в мой дом. Слово. Word. Pay attention to which word you are using. Смотри за словами. Смотри за словами. Uh, maybe it's not very literal um, translation, but it means watch your mouth or something like that. Место. Place. Okay, let's pick the place for meeting. Давай выберем место для встречи. Давай выберем место для встречи. That's a great place to have a cup of tea. Это отличное место для чашечки кофе. Лицо. Face. Face. Лицо. Your face looks familiar. Твое лицо мне знакомо. Твое лицо мне знакомо. Неделя. Week. Call me next week. Позвони мне на следующей неделе. Позвони мне на следующей неделе. Нога. Leg. Or legs. Ноги. Now you have nice legs. У тебя красивые ноги. You have nice legs. У тебя красивые ноги. Мать. Мама. Mother. I really like talking to your mother. Мне очень нравится общаться с твоей мамой. Okay, мать is more like official way of saying it when you don't know whose mother we're talking about. But mama is more like friendly and personally if you really know your friend's mother in person. So you can say your, your mother, твоя мама. Отец. Папа. Father. Basically the same with the mother. Uh, you can say uh, in the official way, отец. Your father, твой отец. Or you can say in a more friendly way, твой папа. Your father, твой папа. Твой папа любит рыбалку. Does your father like fishing? Твой папа любит рыбалку. Месяц. Month. This word in two different meanings. One is, as I just mentioned about, month. And another one is the moon. The young moon is месяц. When it's not full moon, but, you know, the young kind of shape, like it's eating cheese. Today we're talking about the month, month of the year. Месяц года. What month of the year is it now? Какой сейчас месяц года? Час. Hour. Basically, when somebody is asking you what time is it now, they're asking which hour is it now. So, they can ask you, который сейчас час? What time is it now? Который сейчас час? It is five o'clock now. Сейчас пять часов. In plural, it's changing a little bit, so it becomes часы. And again, it could be tricky because часы, the word, the noun часы, could be used for uh, watch. <laughs> Сестра. Sister. Сестра. Have you met his sister? She is very nice. Ты знаком с его сестрой? Она очень приятная девушка. Брат. Brother. Please come. I will introduce you to my brother. Приходи. Я познакомлю тебя со своим братом. Вода. Water. Oh, I'm so thirsty. Please give me some water. Я умираю от жажды. Дай мне воды. Сумка. Bag. Please take care of your bag. Пожалуйста, смотри за своей сумкой. So, thank you guys for staying with us. And it was Top 25 Russian Nouns with me, Katusha. And I'll see you again for next time. Don't forget to subscribe. See you. Пока-пока. Вы когда-нибудь пробовали?
Young Mans. Hi, welcome to Introduction to Russian. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by. Hi everyone, I'm Katya. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Russian grammar. Word order refers to the order in which words are structured to form a sentence in a given language. Consider the English sentence, I ate an apple. But first, let's remove the article an here for simplicity, so we're just left with I ate apple. The basic word order for English is subject, verb, object, or SVO for short. If we break down the English sentence, I ate apple, we can see that the subject I is presented first, followed by the verb ate, and then finally the object apple is positioned last. This is the basic word order for sentences in English. Russian uses the same word order as English, SVO. Parin kupil sabaku. Parin, the subject, a guy, goes first. Kupil, the verb bought, goes second. And sabaku, the object dog, goes last. This means that you can create any basic sentence in Russian simply by exchanging the English words for Russian words using a dictionary and still be understood. Isn't that easy? In fact, Russian word order is much more flexible than English. Compare the following examples. Cats eat mice. If we were to swap the subject with the object, we'd get Mice eat cats. As you can see, the SVO word order in English is fixed. Changing the word order changes the meaning of the sentence completely. Russian, on the other hand, is much more flexible. Starting with the SVO word order, Koshki yedyat myshei. We can swap the subject with the object like we did for English. And yet, myshei yedyat koshki. The meaning of the sentence remains the same. In fact, we could swap the sentence any which way and it still wouldn't change the core meaning of the sentence. Unlike English, Russian doesn't rely on the word order of the sentence to signify if a word is the subject or an object because it uses special word endings that act as markers to indicate the role of the word in the sentence. In this example, we use the word ending ye in mushe to indicate that mice is the object of the sentence. And so we can move it around anywhere in the sentence and it still be the object. Now you know how to create basic sentences in Russian, but how do you make a sentence negative? Negation in Russian is easy. Just add nie, meaning no, before the verb. On speed. On nie speed. Ya znaю. Ya nie znaю. Unlike English, Russian permits double negatives. So in English, you would say nothing happened. But in Russian, we would say nothing didn't happen. Ничего не произошло. You can form many basic negative sentences in Russian by placing no before the verb. Turning a sentence into a question in Russian is even easier than turning it into a negative sentence. Simply raise your pitch at the end of the question as you would in English. Unlike English, though, you do not need to rearrange the order of any words. Simply say the sentence and raise the pitch at the end. Ты понимаешь? Ты понимаешь? To ask more than yes or no questions, you'll need to learn question words. Some common question words are... Что? Как? Кто? Какой? Когда? We'll cover more of this in future lessons on Russian grammar. Well done! Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that Russian sentences can be formed using an SVO word order, just like English. Additionally, Russian uses markers to indicate the role of a word in a sentence, which allows the word order to be much more flexible. You make a negative sentence by adding no before the verb. And to create basic questions in Russian, simply add a question mark and raise your pitch at the end of a sentence. We've covered only the absolute basics of Russian grammar. 
If you're interested in learning more, check out our Russian in 3 minutes video series. In that course, we teach you useful phrases while covering the fundamentals of Russian grammar, and each lesson is only 3 minutes long. In the next lesson, we'll introduce you to the basics of Russian writing. See you in the next lesson. Bye! Bye! Hi there! Привет всем! My name is Katusha and I'm here for you with 15 favorite words chosen by you, our fans. Thank you so much! So, let's begin and have a look what kind of words you've chosen. Now, ta-da! Дорогая Darling As the word darling you can say when you are referring to someone as your girlfriend or your, like, dearest friend who is female, uh, your mother, your sister, one is for your girlfriend, and one is just for dearest woman in your life. It doesn't mean you are dating your mother, which is awkward, I mean... <laughs> Darling, could you pass me the bread? So, дорогая, подай, пожалуйста, хлеб. Есть. To eat. Что у вас есть поесть? What do you have to eat? So, in Russian language it could be confusing because yest, to have something, and yest, to eat something, has a similar pronunciation. So, be careful. I guess our fans are worried about eating. It's very important in Russia, yes, so... Жили-были. Once upon a time. So, well, it's used only in uh, fairy tales. As soon as fairy tale story starts, you will always see once upon a time Жили были grandmother and grandpa. And they had a cute baby, whatever. Здравствуйте. Hello. Здравствуйте. Hello, everyone. Every time you see someone you don't know, you just say Здравствуйте. Or Здравствуйте. Колокол. The bell. So it's big bell. Колокол. So you ring the bell for religious people to come to church or you ring the bell when something is wrong so people can hide in the church in old times. Now I'm not sure if we still do that, but maybe some churches still do that. So yes, the bell. Ring the bell. Позвонить колокол. Кошка. Cat. A male cat will be кот. And the female cat will be кошка. Кошка. Sounds very cute. You can say, Я люблю кошек. I love cats. Кот, кошка. ta -da! Люблю. Love. Again, we can say, Я люблю кошек. I love cats. Uh, Я люблю пирожные. I love cakes. Я. I. I don't like uh, drinking vodka. <laughs> Я не люблю пить водку. So, you start with я, and then everything else. Now you should try. Мир. World. The world is big. Мир огромен. Or, мир большой. Навсегда. Forever. Навсегда. Let's be friends forever. Давай будем друзьями навсегда. I don't know if you have the sign when friends want to stay longer together and keep to each other, they usually do like this. Надежда. Hope. Actually, it is one of the female Russian names. Надежда. In short, mean is Nadia. And uh, if we talk about the word, then it means hope. For example, you can say Надежда умирает последней. Hope never dies. Or in Russian we say Hope is the last thing to die. So, which means there is always hope, right? Прикольно. Awesome. Прикольно. Mmm, прикольно. If you gotta promote it, I can say прикольно. Mm, I think it's mostly used between, like, maybe younger generation. The older generation doesn't really use it much because it's like a slang. It's not really a dictionary word, so... But if you use it, people will know what you mean. It, it, they will think, wow, this foreigner knows this word, it's cool. Прикольно. СССР. Союз Советских Социалистических Республик. USSR. 
the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. SSSR. Try that. SSSR. SSSR. <laughs> okay, that's too fast. Sorry, guys. Soyuz Sovietskih Socialistikskih Respublik. We don't use it anymore. Only like you can hear from fathers or mothers still discussing the past. Uh, for example, you can say, oh, I've heard about USSR before. Да, я слышала о Союзе Советских Социалистических Республик. Хорошо. Good. Хорошо, что ты знаешь о Союзе Советских Социалистических Республик. It's good you know about USSR. Cool. Прикольно. Хорошо. Let's move to another word. Okay? Это вам не хухры-мухры. It's a big deal. Это вам не хухры-мухры. And I don't hear it much recently, but it will be really funny if a Russian person will hear it from a foreigner. It will make them laugh, I think. Really. <laughs> it's very cute. I wouldn't take it seriously if somebody told me that. Это вам не хухры-мухры. So, um, thank you for being with me, Katusha. And keep in touch and stay, stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe. Пока -пока. Hi everyone! Welcome to the Ultimate Russian Pronunciation Guide. In this series, you'll master Russian pronunciation. Proper pronunciation is essential in Russian, and in this series you'll learn it in a fast, comprehensive, and easy way. In this first lesson, you'll learn about the building blocks of the Russian pronunciation system that will help you in future lessons. The Russian alphabetical writing system is derived from the Cyrillic script, which is one of the most commonly used writing systems in the world. The Russian alphabet is made up of 33 letters, consisting of 21 consonants, 10 vowels, and two extra letters which act as modifiers. But be careful not to fall into a very common trap. As you're learning to speak correctly, you shouldn't concern yourself with all the letters. That's right, forget them. You care about the sounds of Russian, and here they are. There are 37 consonant sounds and 13 vowel sounds. Each symbol that you see here represents a single sound determined by the IPA, which is a standardized way to represent sounds without the baggage that's usually involved with traditional letters. By using all of these sounds, you can form every single word in Russian. Have you noticed how most consonant sounds in Russian exist in pairs? K, K, M, M. In each pair, there is the original pronunciation of the consonant sound, k, and that same sound, but with an added y sound, k. Nearly all consonant sounds in Russian exist in this kind of pairing. So if you know how to pronounce the original sound, it's quite easy to figure out its counterpart simply by adding an additional y sound. Still seem complicated? Well, how about this? Of the 37 consonant sounds in Russian, you already know 15 of the original sounds. That's right. If you're a native English speaker, then you already make these sounds every day. You can also ignore 10 of the vowel sounds for the very same reason. With just a tiny bit of effort and creativity, you could effectively ignore 14 more consonant sounds simply by adding a Y sound to the ones that you already know. The only thing standing between you and perfect Russian pronunciation is 8 new consonant sounds and 3 new vowel sounds. You can handle that. Now let me introduce Katya, who will be helping you to master these new sounds. Привет! Меня зовут Катя. Катя will be giving you native pronunciation examples for you to imitate. But for this first lesson, just sit back and listen to the unique sounds of Russian. Рыба, горло, река, три, синий, есть, щетка, щель, цель, отец. Чай, часы, жест, тяжелый, дрожжи, езжу, ты, мы, южный, юноша, Россия, молоко. 
In the next lesson, we'll look at the top five pronunciation mistakes Russian learners make. You'll want to make sure not to fall into these common traps. After that, we'll begin going through the vowels and consonants of Russian. This is your chance to learn how to correctly say all of the words you just heard. We'll finish up the series by covering some special topics that will really make your Russian sound natural. To close this lesson, here's a question for you. Why is it important to spend time on learning proper pronunciation, even if you're already an advanced speaker? The answer, you will be understood, and this will help you build more confidence as you communicate in Russian. For beginners, you're creating a strong foundation to build on. And for more advanced students, this is your chance to improve your accent and lose any bad habits you may have picked up. What is the hardest part of Russian pronunciation? Tell us about it in the comments. See you in the next Ultimate Russian Pronunciation Guide lesson. Привет всем! С вами Светлана. Hi everybody, I'm Светлана. Welcome to RussianPod101.com. Русский язык за три минуты. The fastest, easiest and the most fun way to learn Russian. In the last lesson, we learned the numbers from 1 to 10. Do you remember them? I'll remind you. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, Восемь, девять, десять. And now let's continue from eleven. Одиннадцать. А, ди, на, Двенадцать. Две, на, Тринадцать. Три, на, Четырнадцать. Че, тыр, на, Пятнадцать. Пятнадцать, шестнадцать, шестнадцать, семнадцать, семнадцать, восемнадцать, ва семнадцать, девятнадцать, девятнадцать, and finally we have двадцать, двадцать. Okay, now repeat after me. I'll say the numbers and give you time to repeat each one. Одиннадцать, двенадцать, тринадцать, четырнадцать, пятнадцать, шестнадцать, семнадцать, восемнадцать. Девятнадцать, двадцать. These numbers may seem harder to remember and pronounce than those in the previous lesson. But as you have probably noticed, the endings are the same. Нацет. The suffix цат is the modified word for ten. Десять, цат. Counting from fifteen till nineteen, you simply eliminate the last letter from the original word and add нацет. In the case of 14, you eliminate the letter Ye. Let's not stop at 20. Let's learn how to count up to 100. First, I'll give you the tens. 30. 40. 40. 50. 50. 60. 60. 70. Семьдесят, восемьдесят, восемьдесят, девяносто, девяносто, сто, сто. Remember I told you that the suffix сад means ten? Well, we have another modification for ten. It is десят. It is almost the same as the original word for ten, десять. In most cases, you simply add the number in front of it to multiply it by 10. 8, 8 plus 10. 10 is 80. 80. Easy! The word for 100 is also super easy. 
It's sto. I don't think you'll have any problems with this one. The last thing to learn today is how to form compound numbers above 20. Just take the tens and simply add the numbers you learned in the previous lesson. Let's try it out. How would you say 56 in Russian? Let's take it step by step. 50 is 50. And then add 6. 6. 56. It's done. Very easy, right? Let's make another number. For instance, 23. Take 20, 20, and add 3. 3. So we get 23. See? After only two lessons, you are now able to count to 100 in Russian. In the next lesson, we are going to put your number knowledge to use. Do you think you can go shopping in Russian now? If not, I'll be waiting for you in our next Ruski Zig za 3 minute lesson. Пока, пока. До скорого. Привет всем! С вами Светлана. Hi everybody, I'm Светлана. Welcome to RussianPod101.com. Русский язык за три минуты. The fastest, easiest and the most fun way to learn Russian. In the last lesson we learned the phrase Извините, вы говорите по-английски? Excuse me, do you speak English? We mentioned the word Извините, which means excuse me in Russian. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to use Извините and other words when apologizing in Russian. We usually use извините when we want to draw somebody's attention. Perhaps you want to order something in the restaurant or simply ask the time. For example, извините, который час? Excuse me, what time is it? The other meaning of извините is to say I'm sorry for something you've done or haven't done. The word извините derives from the word вина, which means guilt in English. You use it when you feel guilty for bothering somebody or causing some problem. The word извините is used in its formal, polite form. The informal version for it is извини. It can also be used in two ways as mentioned, but it's mostly used in the sense of regret and apology. Извини refers to the informal pronoun you in its singular form. In other words, you would use it when speaking to a person you would address with the pronoun ты. Another informal word for an apology is прости, which has almost the same meaning as извини, but with a slightly higher level of regret. It derives from the verb прощать, which means forgive. So literally this word is translated as forgive me. So the formal way to say forgive me in Russian would be простите or прошу прощения. The meaning of both phrases is almost the same. Простите is an imperative verb which literally means forgive me. Прошу прощения means I am asking you to forgive me. This phrase is a bit more polite than простите. As you might have guessed, the word прошу means I ask. You can add the word пожалуйста, please, to your apology to make it even more polite and sincere. Простите пожалуйста, извините пожалуйста, excuse me please. Okay, great! Now it's time for Svetlana's tips. If you accidentally bump somebody, any of the phrases mentioned in this lesson would be fine for an apology. Just don't say nothing or ignore the other person because you might get a very angry reaction and be yelled at in front of everybody. Russians can be very short-tempered and emotional, but will not usually harbor resentment if you admit your mistake. It is always easier to say a simple word of apology straight away rather than try to cool an angry Russian down. Okay, that's it for this lesson. Can you count in Russian? In the next lesson, we'll learn the numbers from 1 to 10. I'll be waiting for you in our next Ruski Zig za 3 minute lesson. Пока, пока!
Hi everyone, welcome to the Ultimate Russian Pronunciation Guide. In this lesson, you'll learn the top five Russian pronunciation mistakes to avoid. These are common mistakes that Russian learners tend to make, so pay close attention and make sure that you don't make these same mistakes too. Are you ready? Then let's get started. Ooh. This is a rare sound that doesn't exist in many languages. Many Russian learners are unable to pronounce this vowel simply because it's unfamiliar to them. When Russian learners attempt to pronounce this vowel, they tend to pronounce it as e instead of u. This is an issue because the former sound is another vowel in Russian. Consider these two words. Bit. Bit. These two words sound very similar, but their meanings are completely different. It is essential that you're able to clearly distinguish between the two vowels. E. U. The inability to do so could lead to some very problematic misunderstandings. We'll cover this sound in the next lesson. Stay tuned so that you can correct this common mistake. This is another letter that's difficult for Russian learners to deal with. The soft sign is a letter that acts like a modifier. It doesn't produce any sound on its own, but is instead used to affect a preceding letter's sound quality by adding palatalization. The problem arises when speakers pronounce words without paying attention to the tiny soft sign. Compare the following examples. Listen to Katya and pay attention to the way it's pronounced in the following words. Brat, brat, ugal, ugal, mat, mat. Sometimes the soft sign may be the only quality that distinguishes two words. As you can see, ignoring the soft sign will undoubtedly lead to miscommunication. But don't worry, we'll teach you all about these sounds and palatalization throughout this series. Sh. This is another difficult sound for Russian learners. It should sound similar to the SHCH sound in the words fresh cheese, but a little softer, or like the SH in the words ship or sheep. Be careful though, because it's not the same as the sh in shock. The sh in ship forces the tongue to be raised higher than in words like shock. Listen carefully to the way that Katya pronounces this consonant. Sh. Sh. Blush. Shuka. Shotka. Notice how it sounds a little more constricted and tense. It also sounds slightly longer than other consonants. If you want to know how to pronounce this sound correctly, stay tuned until lesson six, where we break it down in detail. There are many different ways to construct statements and questions in Russian, either with or without the use of interrogative words like what, why, when, how, and so forth. And because of this fact, things can get quite chaotic when improper intonation is used. Intonation can transform a statement into a question and vice versa in Russian. Many students of Russian don't pay much attention to intonation. Without the proper intonation, however, it's very difficult for native listeners to judge whether the utterance is a statement or a question. Compare the following examples. Это музей. Это музей? The first example is a statement, meaning, this is a museum. The second is a question, meaning, is this a museum? As you can see, changing the intonation alone can change the meaning of a sentence entirely. Improper use of intonation can lead to very problematic communication. Try to pay attention to the way native Russians pronounce sentences and try to imitate them. Don't beat yourself up if you don't get it straight away, though, because intonation usually comes naturally the more you study a language. Y. E. Many letters in Russian look very similar, and this can be a difficult problem for new learners. This is particularly true for these two letters. Y is a consonant, and it sounds like the Y sound in boy. E is actually a vowel, even though it looks very similar to the previous letter. It sounds like the I sound in visa. Consider the following examples. Moi. Mai. Tvoi, tvoi. Clearly, failing to recognize these two letters will result in the wrong pronunciation. Try to be mindful of these two letters and other letters that may look alike in Russian. Now you know the top five Russian pronunciation mistakes to avoid. Try to be careful so that you don't make these same mistakes. 
In the next lesson, we'll start learning Russian vowel sounds. What's your biggest challenge with Russian pronunciation? Is it one of these top five mistakes? Let us know in the comments. Stick with us and you'll overcome it quickly. See you in the next Ultimate Russian Pronunciation Guide lesson. Hi everyone, I'm Gabriella. How are your Russian listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Женщина спрашивает кое-что у продавца в книжном магазине. Какую книгу хочет посмотреть женщина? Извините, могу я взглянуть на книгу вон на той полке? Которую книгу вы хотите посмотреть? Книгу о машинах. Подождите, пожалуйста. Вот эту? Верно. Вот, пожалуйста. Какую книгу хочет посмотреть женщина? Женщина спрашивает кое-что у продавца в книжном магазине. Какую книгу хочет посмотреть женщина? Извините, могу я взглянуть на книгу вон на той полке? Которую книгу вы хотите посмотреть? Книгу о машинах. Подождите, пожалуйста. Вот эту? Верно. Вот, пожалуйста. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. Hi everybody, I'm Katusha from RussianPod101.com. Do you know how to say I love you in Russian? In this lesson, you'll learn three different ways to say I love you and a special phrase for Valentine's Day. Let's start with the most common phrase. Я люблю тебя. Я люблю тебя. I love you. This phrase is direct. You should use it only when you're confessing your love. If you want to be less direct, you can use this phrase. Ты так много значишь для меня. Ты так много значишь для меня. It means you mean so much to me. Now, if you want to be more romantic in expressing your love for someone, you can say this phrase. Слова не могут описать мою любовь к тебе. Слова не могут описать мою любовь к тебе. It means words can't describe my love for you. Now you know three different ways to say I love you in Russian. And here is one more. What if you want to spend Valentine's Day with someone special? In that case, say this phrase. Будешь ли ты моим Валентином? Will you be my Valentine? Будешь ли ты моим Валентином? Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. Listen to the expression and repeat after me. I love you. Я люблю тебя. Я люблю тебя. You mean so much to me. Ты так много значишь для меня. Ты так много значишь для меня. Words can't describe my love for you. Слова не могут описать мою любовь к тебе. Слова не могут описать мою любовь к тебе. Will you be my Valentine? Будешь ли ты моим Валентином? Будешь ли ты моим Валентином? Well done! Did you know that on Valentine's Day, 
It's common to give your love valentines, or in Russian, valentinki. These are small, heart-shaped cards that are typically red or pink. Traditionally, valentines are unsigned because it's thought that the heart will point out the sender of the love note. People in love also give each other various small gifts – chocolates, a stuffed toy, or even jewelry. You just learned three different ways to say I love you in Russian and one special phrase for Valentine's Day. And if you're interested in learning more, don't forget to download your free Romance and Love cheat sheet, which includes romance words, compliments, and pickup lines. Check out the description below and go to RussianPod101.com now. I'll see you next time! Увидимся в следующем уроке! Здравствуйте! Я Светлана. Welcome to RussianPod101.com. Alphavit made easy. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn the Russian Cyrillic alphabet, the alphavit. In the previous lesson, we continued introducing some false friends. Russian letters that look like letters of the English alphabet, but sound completely different. We've already learned several, but do you remember how to read and write them? Taking the time to review the lessons will be the key to learning how to write in Russian. In this lesson, we'll finish up with our false friends. Then we'll learn a few more words for you to add to your notebook. Ready to learn? Then let's go! Our first letter is S. It looks identical to the English upper and lowercase c, right? Of course, the Russian S does not sound like the English C, although I guess sometimes it does. I mean, the English C can sometimes make an S sound, so it's kind of like a mostly false friend, right? Here's the uppercase. And the lowercase. The cursive uppercase S looks like this. It's similar to the English cursive C, but thankfully it's a bit simpler than most Russian letters. Uppercase S is a single stroke which connects easily to the next letter without lifting your pen or pencil. As for the lowercase s, it's identical to the uppercase except for its size. Now we'll write them. And the lowercase. The second letter we'll learn in this lesson looks pretty familiar. U. As you can see, it looks similar to an English Y, with just small differences. Of course, it doesn't sound like Y at all, but at least it's easy to pronounce. U makes an U sound 100% of the time. Here's how to write the printed versions. And the lowercase. Now let's take a look at how to write U in cursive. The uppercase version looks like this. As you can see, the cursive version of U looks similar to the English Y. It's written in a single stroke and connects easily to the next letter. While the uppercase version does not dip below the line, the lowercase version does. Now it's time to write it. and the lowercase. Let's learn one more letter. The third letter we learn in this lesson should look pretty familiar too. Ha. As you can see, it looks identical to the English X, but of course it doesn't sound like X. Actually, this will be a new sound for most English speakers. Ha makes a harder H sound, H. Ha makes this sound 100% of the time. Here's how to write the printed versions. And the lowercase. As you can see, the cursive version of Ha is not at all similar to the cursive version of the English X. 
It's written in two strokes and connects easily to the next letter. Lowercase ha looks exactly like the uppercase version, but just a little smaller. Let's write it. And the lowercase. And that's all! Wow! Great job today! We finally met the last of our false friends. We'll continue learning more letters in the next lesson. But for now, let's practice using these letters in some new words. First up is a word that uses two of our new letters. Try reading it aloud. It should be easy. It's pronounced sakhar and means sugar. Russians love tea with sugar. So we'll see this word a lot. Now let's try writing it. We'll use lowercase letters. Sakhar. Now let's try writing two sentences. As you know from a previous lesson, on means he. Turak means Turk, as in someone from Turkey. So the first sentence means he is Turkish. In the second sentence we see yest, which is an important word meaning eats. And halva is a popular sweet in Russia, originally from the Middle East. In English it's called halva. The second sentence means he is eating halva. Now let's try to write it. We'll start each sentence properly with an uppercase letter. On Turak. On jest halvu. Now it's time for Svetlana's insights. You probably realized this, but the order we are learning the alphabet is not actually the correct order. We are using this order because it's easier to learn. But just be aware that it's not the way Russian children learn it, or how a Russian would recite the alphabet. In the next Alphabet Made Easy lesson, we'll be introducing some interesting new letters that are going to be completely unfamiliar to you. Are you excited yet? Пока, пока. Здравствуйте. Я Светлана. Welcome to RussianPod101.com. Alphabet Made Easy. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn the Russian Cyrillic alphabet, the alphabet. In the last lesson, we met several new friends and started using B and G. If you're watching this lesson, that means you're feeling comfortable with those and ready for a new challenge. In this lesson, we'll continue with the new friends category. Remember, these are letters that don't look like English letters, but have sounds that can be found in English. Our first new friend is de. Maybe you recognize this letter from a James Bond movie, or maybe you've seen da spelled out before. If you have, you probably realize that de is pronounced just like the English d. In printed form, size is the only difference between the uppercase and lowercase letters. Here's the uppercase. and the lowercase. Now we'll look at the cursive versions. English speakers will be happy to see that the cursive uppercase D looks pretty similar to an uppercase D. What a nice new friend! While it's written in a slightly different way, it should be easy to recognize. It's written in one stroke and you have to pick up your pen to begin the next letter. Unfortunately, de isn't such a nice friend when it comes to the lowercase. 
it looks just like a lowercase English G. This means you should have no problem writing it, but it's easy to accidentally read it as a G. Now we'll write them. And the lowercase. Let's move on to another new friend. The second letter we'll learn in this lesson looks like the number 3. Z. While it may look strange, Z has a pretty familiar sound. Z always makes a Z sound, and despite how it looks, it sounds exactly like the English Z. Here's how to write the printed versions. And the lowercase. Now let's take a look at how to write Z by hand. Uppercase Z is pretty similar to the printed version. It's one stroke, but we have to pick up our pen before moving on to the next letter. The lowercase is where it gets interesting. Remember learning cursive in elementary school? If you remember how to write the lowercase Z, then you'll be happy to see the cursive Z is strikingly similar. Now it's time to write it. And the lowercase. Okay, that's it for our new friends in this lesson. Now it's time to bring everything together in order to write some new words. First up is a very common word that you'll use when talking about your plants. Can you read it by yourself? It's Zaftra. You're forgiven if you said Zamra. The cursive T looks a lot like an English M. Now try to write it yourself. Завтра. The next word is a fun one. Let's see if you can read it. Did you read it as Дед Мороз? It can be tricky to know when О is О and when it's А, but we'll talk more about that in a later lesson. Дед Мороз is the Russian Santa Claus. So let's try writing it. Both Дед and Мороз should start with uppercase letters. Дед Мороз. Remember that after the uppercase D, you have to pick up your pen to start the next letter. M, on the other hand, connects easily to the next letter. Nice job! Now it's time for Svetlana's insights. You may have noticed that some uppercase letters like D don't seem to be connecting very well. This happens with many uppercase letters in Russian. In these situations, you have the choice of either letting the letter stand alone and starting from the next lowercase letter, or adding a little connecting tail to the uppercase letter. However, when writing, most people don't connect the, v, and other difficult to connect uppercase letters. That's it for this lesson. Next time, we'll continue to introduce more new friends. See you in the next Alphavid Made Easy lesson. Пока, пока. Здравствуйте! Я Светлана. Welcome to RussianPart101.com. Alphavit made easy. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn the Russian Cyrillic alphabet, the alphavit. In the last lesson we met the last of our false friends. The Russian letters that look like letters of the English alphabet but sound different. I hope you remember how to read and write them all. If you've been practicing, I'm sure you're doing a great job. In this lesson we'll learn a new category of Russian letters new friends. 
New friends are letters that don't look like English letters, but have sounds that can be found in English. That means that they should all be very easy to pronounce. Ready to learn? Then let's go! Our first new friend is B. This is the first truly new-looking letter for English speakers. Although it looks new, it should sound quite familiar. B is pronounced just like the English B. As you can see, though, the upper and lower case look very different. Here's the upper case. And the lower case. The cursive uppercase B looks like this. It has two strokes and continues to the next letter after the lower stroke. The lower case is quite different from the uppercase, and you have to lift your pen at the end. This makes lowercase B the only letter which does not connect smoothly to the following letter. Now we'll write them. and the lowercase. Let's move on to another new friend. The second letter in this lesson looks like a rotated uppercase L in English. G. While it may look strange, G has a pretty familiar sound. G functions in the same way as the English G and almost always makes a hard g sound. Sometimes it can sound like v, but only in rare cases. Here's how to write the printed versions. And the lowercase. Now let's take a look at how to write ge in cursive. The uppercase version looks like this. As you can see, the cursive version of ge looks kind of like the uppercase T in English. It's written in two strokes and connects to the next letter by swinging back around. Now let's take a look at the lowercase cursive ge. Lowercase ge is a lot trickier because it looks nothing like the printed version. On its own, it's written like this, but when connected to the preceding letter, it looks a lot more natural. Handwriting time. and the lowercase. That's it for our new friends today. We'll continue learning more letters next lesson. But for now, let's practice using these letters in some new words. First up is a word that uses both of our new letters. Try reading it aloud. I hope you could successfully read this as Boch. It's a very important word for many Russian people. It means God. Let's write it. Boch. Next is a somewhat funny phrase with two grammatically correct sentences. We already know some of these words. Hopefully you remember that on and yes mean he and its. Behemoth is similar to the English word behemoth, but in Russian it also means hippopotamus. Travu means grass. So these sentences can be translated as it's a hippopotamus, it's eating grass. Now that we understand it, let's try writing it by hand. On begimot, on yes travu. Let's start with an uppercase O. Also remember that lowercase b does not connect directly to the next letter. Be careful not to confuse the lowercase m and t. 
give it your best shot. Now it's time for Svetlana's insights. Are you familiar with Greek letters? Maybe you remember them from high school or college. If so, you've probably recognized a great deal of these Russian letters. The Cyrillic alphabet was originally derived from Greek letters, so many of them bear close resemblance even today. That just about wraps it up for this lesson. Next time I'll introduce some more new friends. I hope you're excited. See you in the next Alphavid Made Easy lesson. Пока, пока. Hello, привет. My name is Katusha and welcome to top 25 Russian verbs. Let's start. Начнём. Быть. To be. To be or not to be. Быть или не быть. Я могу быть через 15 минут. I can be there in 15 minutes. Сказать. To say. Сказать. To say. Я хочу сказать. I would like to say, and then you keep saying what you want to say. The boss said, blah, blah, blah. Начальник сказал, and then you keep going what exactly he says. Moch, be able to. Moch, to be able to. It is very close to the meaning of I can. For example, я могу тебе помочь. I am able of helping you. I can help you. Говорить. To speak. Я говорю. I speak. For example, don't speak when I speak. Не говори, когда я говорю. Знать. To know. Знать. To know. I know what you know. Я знаю, что ты знаешь. Я знаю. I know. Ты знаешь. You know. Стать. To become. Стать. You can use it if you want to become somebody. So you can also say, I would like to become a designer. Я хотела бы стать дизайнером. Я хотела бы стать дизайнером. Есть. To exist. There is. I exist. Я есть. Хотеть. To want. Хотеть. To want. Я хочу. I want. What do you want? Что ты хочешь? Видеть. To see. Видеть. To see. Я тебя вижу. I can see you. Я тебя вижу. Идти. To go. Идти. To go. For example, when you want to say let's go, it changes to пошли, пошли. But if you just use it, we can go to zoo. Мы можем пойти в зоопарк. I don't want to go anywhere. Я никуда не хочу идти. Я никуда не хочу идти. Стоять. To stand. Стоять. I had to stand in a train for two hours. Мне пришлось стоять в поезде два часа. Думать. To think. Думать. Think. I think that... Blah, 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 blah. Mm. Я думаю, что... Blah, 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 blah. You use it when you want to say something. Your own opinion about something. Я не думаю, что это хорошая идея. I don't think it's a good idea. Спросить. To ask. Спросить. Ask. Uh, for example, if you lost your way in a city, so you want to ask someone how to get to the next bus station, you can stop a person and just say, Могу я спросить? Can I ask you? Могу я спросить? Sorry, can I ask you? And then you can ask how to get somewhere. Жить. To live. Жить. To live. When you introduce yourself and you want to say where you live, exactly which city, which town, which country, or like which district. So, я живу в Москве. I live in Moscow. Смотреть. To watch. To look. Смотреть. 
I look at you. Я смотрю на тебя. Your mom can see that you have dirty jeans or something. She could say, посмотри на себя. Look at yourself. Look at you. <laughs> With the face like that. I watch a lot of movies. Я смотрю много фильмов. Сидеть. To sit. Сидеть. Sit. I don't like to sit. Я не люблю сидеть. For example, if you say, I don't like to sit on one spot, literally it means, я не люблю сидеть на одном месте, which means uh, you like to move a lot and do, like to do different things and have a lot of things to do. Кушать. To eat. What do you like to eat? Что ты любишь кушать? Что ты любишь кушать? Иметь. Hmm? To have. Иметь. To have. Я имею три собаки. I have three dogs. Делать. To do. I can do this. Я могу это сделать. Я могу, which means I can do. For example, you're doing your homework, so you can say, Я делаю домашнее задание. Literally, I'm doing my homework right now. What are you doing today? Что ты сегодня делаешь? Взять. To take. Взять. To take. Я могу тебя взять с собой. I can take you with me. Понимать. To understand. Понимать. To understand. So you're like complaining about life and it's like, and then your friend goes like, Я понимаю. Я тебя так понимаю. I understand you so much. I, I understand what you mean. I can feel what you're saying. Казаться. To appear. To seem. It seems it's gonna rain tomorrow. Кажется, завтра будет дождь. It's close to I think, but you're not sure. It's not your real op opinion about something, it's just you're guessing. Давать, to give. You can say, give me please. Дай мне пожалуйста. Дай мне пожалуйста. Or uh, you can say, давайте. It's a bit different meaning, means let's. Do something. Давайте. Давайте пойдем гулять. Let's go for a walk. I'd like to give you a piece of advice. Я хочу дать тебе совет. Ходить. To walk. To go. Ходить. To walk, to go. So it's similar to идти, which means go somewhere, like visiting some classes. For example, you can say, I want to go to ballet classes. Я хочу ходить на занятия балета. Я хочу ходить на занятия балета. I like walking. Я люблю ходить. Спать. To sleep. Спать. To sleep. I don't want to sleep right now. Я не хочу сейчас спать. Oh, I really want to sleep. Я очень хочу спать. Don't sleep, don't sleep. Не спи, не спи. You can see somebody is falling asleep. You're like, don't sleep, don't sleep. Не спи, не спи. This is it, our 25 top Russian verbs. Now, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. Пока, пока. Subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs>
Принеси мне эту большую корзину. Принеси мне ту большую корзину. Быстрый. Fast. Быстрый. Fast and quick is the same. In Russian is быстрый. Run as fast as you can. Беги так быстро, как только можешь. Беги так быстро, как только можешь. Sometimes when the people want to rush you and do something really quick, they can tell you, быстро, быстро, like quick, quick, fast, fast, move, move, you know. Быстро, быстро, <laughs> move your legs. Медленный, slow. Медленный. Why are you so slow? Почему ты такой медленный? Простой, simple. It's not that simple. Все не так просто. I like this skirt. It's very simple. Мне нравится эта юбка. Она очень простая. Высокий. High. Tall. Высокий. You're so tall. Ты такой высокий. Or you can say giraffe is so tall. Wow. Жираф такой высокий. Главный. Main. Main menu or it can also use this adjective for like uh, meaning that there is a person higher than you, like for example, your boss or your manager, executive manager, somebody like that. So you can ask when you want to ask who is in charge here, you can ask кто здесь главный, which means who is the main person here. I, I need to talk to like the boss of the boss. So uh, who is in charge? Кто главный? Silly, strong, strong. I'm not that strong. Я не очень сильная. This singer has a very strong voice. У этой певицы очень сильный голос. Длинный, long. My nose is too long. Мой нос очень длинный. His hair is quite long. У него довольно длинные волосы. Добрый, kind. He was so kind to me. Он был очень добр ко мне. Злой, mean. Mean. <laughs> He's so mean. Or she's so mean. I don't know why. Она такая злая. Я не знаю почему. Она очень злая. She is very mean. Горячий, hot. Hot drinks, hot food or literally things that are hot and you can also use for someone you find somebody hot you know so uh, you can say she's hot wow она горячая or you can say oi this tea is hot oi это чай горячий in russian instead of ouch we say oi or ai ai oi <laughs> холодный cold winters in russia are super cold Русские зимы очень холодные. Okay. Первый. First. Okay, move. I came first. Уйди. Я пришел первый. Grannies are queuing in a shop for something, in a store. They can be arguing who was first and who left the queue and then came back. So they talk about it a lot. Like, oh no, I was first. I was first. Нет, я первая. Нет, я первая. So <laughs> it's funny to watch. Uh, first time I saw this movie. Первый раз я посмотрел это кино. Плохой. Bad. Mostly we use it as not so bad. How are you? Not bad. Как дела? Неплохо. So bad is плохо or плохой. But not bad is неплохо. Не means not. How was your surgery? Как прошла операция? It was really bad. Очень плохо. Известный. Famous. Известный. She dreams to be famous. Она мечтает быть известной. Famous. Она мечтает стать известной. Her dream is to become famous. Последний. Latest. Literally, последний means last. Something that comes last. For example, you can use it when you haven't seen your friend for a while. Последний раз я тебя видел было зимой. Last time I saw you, it was in winter. Your mom can tell you, last time I talked to you, it was two weeks ago. 
Последний раз, когда я с тобой говорила, это было две недели назад. So she's kind of complaining. Короткий. Short. I have short hair. У меня короткие волосы. My holiday was too short. Мои выходные были очень короткие. Of course you want your holidays to last longer. Красивый. Beautiful. This picture is so beautiful. Эта фотография такая красивая. Сложный. Difficult. Hmm, this task is very difficult. Это задание очень сложное. Hmm. For example, you can say you're reading a book and it's too difficult for your understanding. So you can say this is so difficult. Это очень сложно. Or this book is too difficult. Эта книжка очень сложная. Легкий. The next adjective is light. This conversation is really light. Этот разговор очень легкий. Uh, literally means that somebody or something is really light, like weight. So, for example, this, this computer is really light. So, этот uh, компьютер очень легкий. Or you can use it as a meaning that somebody, it's, it's easy to talk to someone or easy to communicate. So you can also say light, легкий. Our conversation started easily, which means наш разговор начался легко. So it's without any thinking, just, you know, natural. Хороший, good. As you hear Russian people communicating, they say it a lot. When somebody asks them, how are you, they say, хорошо, and then as okay, they, they can also use хорошо. So every time I want to confirm that, yes, I, I listened to you, I heard what you said, and uh, okay, so I can say хорошо. Хорошо, хорошо, хорошо. So we use it a lot. <laughs> This movie was really good. Uh, that film был очень хороший. Очень хороший фильм. Or... Очень хорошая книга, or очень хороший кофе, кофе, very good кофе, right? So, which means it's really good, хороший. Отдаленный, far. As uh, many other Russian adjectives, they are easily transformed into adverbs. So, for example, the far in English doesn't change, but in Russian, the adjective отдаленный can change into adverb, The Russian adjective far can change into adverb, which sounds a bit different, далеко. So if I use an adjective, I can say this shop is a bit far from my home. Этот магазин отдален от моего дома. But if I want to say an adverb, I should uh, say in, in English it doesn't really change. But in Russian it would sound a bit different. This shop is a bit far from my home. So, магазин далеко от моего дома. Этот магазин немного далеко от моего дома. For this adjective, we mostly use it in the adverb. I can see really far. Я могу смотреть очень далеко. Я могу видеть очень далеко. Also, this adjective you can use if there is a person. Uh, living with you, for example, or your best friend, but you can see that in his thoughts he's somewhere not with you. So you can say he's отдален, uh, отдаленный. He's somewhere away from me, you know? So you can say, I don't know why he's uh, really far in his thoughts. Я не знаю почему, но он очень отдаленный от меня. So, uh, which means he's doesn't pay attention to who is uh, next to this person. Маленький. Small. Small. For example, this world is really small. Наш мир очень мал. Наш мир очень маленький. Скучный. Boring. So, for example, this speech is too boring. Эта речь очень нудная. Or скучная. Эта речь очень скучная. So yes, you can, you can use instead of скучный, which is boring, one more word. It's the same meaning, but it sounds a bit different, and it sounds like that. Нудный. Нудный. Скучный. Нудный. Basically, same meaning. 
He is so boring. On takoi nudni. Maybe it's used more for it. <laughs> describing people and <laughs> somebody's character. Okay, let's get some extra adjectives for you. Lazy. Lenivy. It's so easy to be lazy. Так легко быть ленивым. Очень легко быть ленивым. Don't be lazy. Не ленись. Now, next adjective should be благодарный. Grateful. I'm very grateful. Я очень благодарный. Я очень благодарен. I'm very grateful to you. Я очень тебе благодарен. I guess that's it. Top 25 Russian adjectives. Done. Thank you for staying with me, Katusha. I hope you enjoy top 25 Russian adjectives. And I hope to see you again with me and some extra Russian words. And don't forget to subscribe. Пока, пока. Top 25 Russian adjectives. The end. Hi everyone, my name is Katusha and today we're gonna be doing top 25 Russian phrases. Let's start! Начнем! Здравствуйте! Hello! Здравствуйте! Hello! Uh, for example, Здравствуйте! Не подскажете, как пройти в библиотеку? Hello! Could you tell me how to get to the library? We also have another phrase for hello, which is uh, informal and sounds like Привет! 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 Hello! <laughs> Доброе утро! Good morning! Доброе утро! Good morning! Whenever you wake up, you just go Доброе утро! Or Доброе утро! Доброе утро! Something like that, okay? Добрый день! Good afternoon! Добрый день! Good afternoon! Добрый means that something is good, so people are wishing you something good in the day when you wake up, when they meet you at school at the daytime or like in the evening. But usually you say привет, which is hello. Добрый вечер. Good evening. Добрый вечер. Good evening. I guess you can switch it to привет if you talk to your friends, but yeah. If you talk to strangers, you better say polite way and say добрый вечер. Good evening. Добро пожаловать. Welcome. Добро пожаловать. Welcome. You're welcome to come, right? Same as Russian, it's good that you came. Добро пожаловать. Добро пожаловать в Россию. Welcome to Russia. Как вас зовут? What's your name? Как вас зовут? What's your name? So first, when you see a stranger, you have to say, Здравствуйте. Как вас зовут? Меня зовут. My name is. Меня зовут. And your name. My name is. Ding, 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 ding. So let's practice. Здравствуйте. Как вас зовут? Меня зовут Катя. How was it? <laughs> Am I talking to myself? Приятно познакомиться. Nice to meet you. Приятно познакомиться. It was nice to meet you. Здравствуйте. Как вас зовут? Меня зовут Катя. О, oh, приятно познакомиться. Got it? Как дела? How are you? When you meet anyone you know, you want to ask what? You want to ask how are you, right? So, sometimes instead of hello, you just go how are you? Как дела? Привет, как дела? Literally, how are your things going? So now you can make a conversation. А у тебя? How about yourself? Привет, как дела? Хорошо. А у тебя? And how are you doing? Which makes sense. So they care about you. They want to know how you're doing. It's nice. Спасибо. Thank you. Спасибо. Thank you. Привет. Как дела? Хорошо. Спасибо. А у тебя? Пожалуйста. Please. You're welcome. Пожалуйста. Please. Or you're welcome. The difference in uh, please and you're welcome is just the way you say it. For example, 
Мам, мам, please, I don't want to go to school. Пожалуйста, мама, я не хочу идти в школу. Which we can hear every morning. Or you can say present, an iPad from my friends. It's like, спасибо. And they go like, пожалуйста. It's like, you're welcome. Что нового? What's new? Что нового? What's new? Basically, it's same as как дела. Just you want to know more details of how things are going. So, привет, как дела? Что нового? Hi, how are you? What's new? До встречи. See you later. До встречи. Usually we don't wave our hands. <laughs> see you later. See you soon. Means literally, till next time I see you. До свидания. Goodbye. Or you can say, пока-пока, which means bye-bye. Где находится туалет? Where is the bathroom? Где находится туалет? Where is the bathroom? Uh, you can make it shorter because the word находится, literally means located or to be, can be just cut out. So you can just say, где туалет? Where is the toilet? Or you can ask, где здесь туалет? Where is the toilet around here? It's a very important phrase <laughs> because it's not easy to find free toilets. <laughs> Remember that one. Сколько это стоит? How much does it cost? Сколько это стоит? How much is it? How much does it cost? So, try. Next time when you're in your shop. Я хочу заказать. I would like to order. Я хочу заказать. I would like to order. Something. Я хочу заказать салат. I would like to order salad. You made up your mind, so you want to order this. So, я хочу. If you want to say it in a more polite way, for example, you're in a very high-end restaurant, and so you want to be polite with the waiter, so you could say, я бы хотел заказать. I would like to order. Я бы хотела заказать чашечку кофе. I would like to order a cup of coffee. That would sound much nicer. Счет, пожалуйста. Check, please. Счет, пожалуйста. The check, please. Oh, официант. Счет, пожалуйста. Now you can have a dinner or lunch in the restaurant. That's nice. Который час? What time is it? Который час? What time is it? Excuse me, what time is it now? Извините, который час? Hmm. Извините. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Извините. I'm sorry and excuse me. If you say I'm sorry, you can say Извините. Like you're really sorry about something you've done. But you can say excuse me like you stepped on somebody's foot in a train. You can say Ой, извините. Хорошо. Good. Okay. Хорошо. Okay. Good. When somebody asks you, how are you doing? Как дела? You can say, хорошо, спасибо. I'm good, thank you. Помогите. Help. Помогите. Someone. Help, help, help me, somebody. Помогите. For example, if you're a big forest and you don't know your way out, so you have to shout to let people hear you. So you're like, помогите. But it's a really rare situation. I hope you won't be in it. Да. Yes. Да. Yes. Russian people say a lot. Да, 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 да. Yes, 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 yes. I agree. Да, да, да. Нет. No. Нет. No. Нет. Would you like to go to dinner with me? No, нет. Thank you for watching. And today we did top 25 Russian phrases for daily conversation. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you. Bye-bye. Пока-пока. Oh, Katya, thank you. Thank you so much. You're so good. Oh, не за что. Здравствуйте! Я Светлана. Welcome to RussianPod101.com. 
Alphavit Made Easy. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn the Russian Cyrillic alphabet, the Alphavit. In the first two lessons we covered the true friends in the Russian alphabet. Now we are going to take a look at some slightly more difficult Russian letters. The false friends. While true friends look and sound like their English counterparts, false friends look like English letters but sound completely different. Ready to go? Let's get started! In this lesson we learn how to read and write two false friends in both printed and cursive forms. Our first letter is Ye. You really want this letter to make an E sound, don't you? Even the upper and lower cases are the same as the English. This letter, however, sounds like Ye and sometimes E. In later lessons we'll tell you more about when and why the pronunciation changes. While Ye is a false friend, at least it's not trying to deceive you too much. Here's the upper case. And the lower case. Now let's take a look at how to write it in cursive. The cursive version of uppercase Y looks like this. It's nearly identical to the English cursive and easy to write. Y is a single stroke, so you can continue with the next letter after the uppercase without lifting your pen or pencil. Now let's take a look at the lowercase handwritten Y. Again, it's similar to the English cursive, but in Russian, their starting point isn't from the bottom. Now we'll write them. And the lowercase. For both the upper and lowercase versions, it's easy to connect to the next letter. The second false friend we'll learn in this lesson is N. As you can see, it looks exactly like an English H. But of course it doesn't sound like one. It's actually pronounced like the English N. You could always rotate the middle line in your head to make them into Ns. Here's how to write the printed versions. And the lowercase. Now let's take a look at how to write N in cursive. The uppercase version looks like this. As you can see, the cursive version of N is very different from the printed version and is written in a single stroke that ends at the bottom rather than the top. As for the lowercase, it's a little bit different. Handwriting time. And the lowercase. That's all for new letters in this lesson. So let's practice writing these letters in some new words. First up is something you'll need to use every day and probably already know. Try sounding it out. Did you guess yet? If so, great job! You may have already known this word before you watched this lesson, but I'll bet you haven't written it before, so let's do it now. Let's make this an exclamation. Нет. So we'll start with an uppercase N, followed by a lowercase Y and T. Then we'll polish it off with an exclamation point. Нет. Are you ready to stop? Нет? I knew it. We'll learn two more words that are very important and that you will hear all the time. Try reading them out loud. Did you say on? Great. What about Anna? Probably not, huh? Here you can hear how O can be pronounced both, O and A. Again, we'll talk later about why this happens. On is the male personal pronoun, the Russian equivalent of he, and Ana is the word for she. Pretty useful. Now let's try writing them. Let's 
Let's start on with a nice O and transition smoothly into the N. Great! Now let's write ANA. Start with the O again, then make a beautiful N and finish it out with an A. Nice work! Now it's time for Svetlana's insight. You may notice that there are some pretty big differences between Russian and English cursive styles. Russian cursive is much more common and more complicated. But it's fun, and you'll really be able to impress your Russian friends with your beautiful penmanship. One structural difference between Russian and English cursive styles is their starting and ending points of letters. In English, letters usually start from the bottom of the writing line. But in Russian, all lowercase letters start slightly above the line. This gives the Russian script a much different look and is part of the reason that some letters have hooks. Well, that's all for this lesson. We'll continue next time with a few more false friends. We'll learn some very useful letters to write common words like AND in Russian. We'll learn that and much more in the next Alphavit Made Easy lesson. Пока, пока. Привет всем! С вами Светлана. Hi everybody, I'm Svetlana. Welcome to RussianPod101.com. Русский язык за три минуты. The fastest, easiest and the most fun way to learn Russian. In the last lesson, we learned how to introduce ourselves in Russian. Today we are going to learn how to use good manners as we thank people. Готовы? Are you ready? Поехали! Then let's start. There are several ways to thank people. Let's start with the most common phrase спасибо. Спасибо. Спасибо means thank you. To say thank you very much, you just need to add большое. Большое спасибо. Большое спасибо. Большое means big. In context, большое спасибо literally means big thanks. So when someone thanks you, how should you answer? There are several ways to respond to this phrase. One which is fairly close in translation to the English phrase you're welcome is пожалуйста. It's very common in Russia, but we also use another phrase quite often. Не за что, which means not at all. The word пожалуйста means something like please in English. Па-жа-лы-ста. In English, it sounds a little bit strange to say please when somebody thanks you, right? But by using this word, you're indicating that you are pleased to be helpful. Не за что means more or less the same thing as пожалуйста, but offers a little more courtesy. Say не за что. Не за что. One which is fairly close in translation to the English phrase you're welcome is пожалуйста. It's very common in Russia, but we also use another phrase quite often, не за что, which means not at all. Now it's time for Svetlana's tips. When saying thank you in Russia, body language is very important. Спасибо is the universal word and can be used in both formal and informal cases. You can make it sound more formal just by changing your intonation, like this. Спасибо. Friends usually act more openly and even slap each other on the shoulder. In any case, it's very important that your thanks be accompanied with smile and again, direct eye contact. Спасибо. Good job! That's it for this lesson. By the way, do you know what the свидание means? In our next lesson, you learn these and other greetings in Russian. Всем спасибо, пока, пока.
Привет всем! С вами Светлана. Hi everybody, I'm Светлана. Welcome to RussianPod101.com. Русский язык за три минуты. The fastest, easiest and the most fun way to learn Russian. In the last lesson, we learned the most common forms of greetings in Russian. Do you remember them? In this lesson, we are going to learn a very useful phrase. Do you speak English? If you find yourself in a situation when you need assistance in English, this phrase can be a lifesaver. And because you're asking it in Russian, you can be sure that everyone will understand what you are saying, even if the answer is no. Here's the informal way to say it. Ты говоришь по-английски? Ты говоришь по-английски? In Russian, verbs change depending on the pronoun that is used. The pronoun ты is the singular you in English. It is a very informal way to address people. Don't use it with complete strangers, especially if the person is older than you. I don't recommend that you use it during formal gatherings either such as business meetings, conferences, and so on. The verb говоришь means speak in English. As I already mentioned, verbs usually change in Russian, according to the pronoun and time. The original form for the verb говоришь is говорить. To learn how to properly conjugate Russian verbs like говорить, please take a look at our absolute beginner series on RussianPod101.com. You can find very detailed grammar lessons and resources there. To make this sentence a question, we don't need to change the word order or anything like that. All we need is to change our intonation. You speak English is Ты говоришь по-английски. But do you speak English is Ты говоришь по-английски. A more polite way to ask this question in Russian is to use the pronoun вы which is translated in English as the plural you. Remember, as we change the pronoun, we also need to conjugate the verb to match it. Говорить is conjugated to говорите. So the whole phrase in Russian will be Вы говорите по-английски? Вы говорите по-английски? The phrase по-английски stays the same. And you probably have already understood the meaning, right? It means in English. Very easy. By adding извините, excuse me, you make the sentence even more polite. Извините, вы говорите по-английски? Извините, вы говорите по-английски? The responses you might receive could be one of these three. Да, yes, да, немного. A little. Немного. Нет. No. Нет. The full version for the negative sentence.
those nature supports or steals your wallet, you'll be glad you learned this sentence. Now let's try writing it by hand. Since it's a sentence, we'll start out with an uppercase O. On vor. Make sure that your connections are smooth and fluid. Now it's time for Svetlana's insights. Your handwriting is like a signature, and no two peoples are the same. When you see actual Russian handwriting, you may notice that sometimes people write letters in different ways. You'll notice a lot of people don't connect letters properly to the next one. Other people mix print-style letters with cursive letters. However, if you learn cursive properly, you will certainly impress your Russian friends and be able to understand almost anyone's handwriting. Good luck! That's it for this lesson. Today you moved from writing single words into sentences. In the next Alphavit Made Easy lesson, we'll be back to meet the last of our false friends and then it's on to uncharted territory. Пока, пока. Welcome to RussianPod101.com, Ruski Zig za 3 minuti. The fastest, easiest and the most fun way to learn Russian. Привет, меня зовут Светлана. Очень приятно. Hi, I'm Svetlana. Nice to meet you. In this series, we are going to learn basic Russian expressions. It's super easy and it takes only 3 minutes. In this lesson, you are going to learn how to introduce yourself in Russian. There are a few ways to do so, depending on how formal you want to be. Let's first take a look at an informal way to introduce yourself in Russian. It's very short and simple. Привет! Меня зовут Светлана. Очень приятно. Hi, I'm Светлана. Nice to meet you. Привет! Меня зовут Светлана. Очень приятно. Start with the greeting Привет. Then you introduce yourself by saying Меня зовут. And then your name Меня зовут Светлана. Finally say Nice to meet you. The simplified and very casual phrase for it is Очень приятно. The whole phrase will be Привет. Меня зовут Светлана. Очень приятно. Now let's take a look at more formal version for greeting and self-introduction. It's a bit longer than the previous one. You ready? Here we go. Здравствуйте. Меня зовут Светлана. Приятно познакомиться. Hello, my name is Светлана. It's a pleasure to meet you. Здравствуйте. Меня зовут Светлана. Приятно познакомиться. What has changed from the previous introduction? Let's take a closer look at these together. First, we change the greeting word привет to здравствуйте. It's very formal and official greeting which can be used any time of the day, morning, afternoon, evening, or even at night. Luckily, the phrase you use to introduce your name stays the same. Меня зовут Светлана. Next, after giving your name, you say приятно познакомиться. It's more formal but can be used in informal greeting as well. It literally means it's a pleasure to meet you. Once more, the formal way to introduce yourself is Здравствуйте, меня зовут Светлана. Приятно познакомиться. In the sentence меня зовут Светлана, меня is myself and зовут is to be called. So the literal translation is I'm called Светлана. Unlike English where I would say my name is Светлана, in Russian we basically say somebody calls me Светлана. Interesting, huh? Now it's time for Svetlana's tips. It's common to shake hands both when you greet somebody and leave them in Russia. Handshaking is more common for men, but women also practice it a lot lately. And don't forget direct eye contact. It's very important in Russia. Good friends usually give hugs and kiss each other on the cheeks three times. Okay, that's it for this lesson. Do you know how to say thank you in Russian? You learn how to say this and many other words in the next lesson. 
Пока-пока, до скорых встреч. See you soon. Здравствуйте, я Светлана. Welcome to RussianPod101.com. Alphavit Mary. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn the Russian Cyrillic alphabet, the Alphavit. Over the next 20 lessons, you learn everything there is about the reading and writing of the Russian language. By the end, you will be ready to dive into the world of Russian literature, make your way through Russian cities and really accelerate your Russian study. Ready to start? Then let's go! The Russian alphabet contains 33 letters. Seeing them laid out like this might seem intimidating, but the trick is to take it step by step, character by character. Don't worry about how hard it looks now. Just stick with me, and in a few short lessons you'll see how easy it actually is. I have some really good news for you. Russian is largely phonetic. This means words are actually pronounced exactly like they're written. Also, if you look at all the characters, you will notice that many are exactly the same as English letters. We'll use the similarity to English to tackle the Russian writing system. Let's separate the letters into four types. True friends. They look nice and they are nice. These are letters which look and sound just like English letters. False friends. They look nice, but don't be fooled. These look like English letters you're familiar with, but sound different. New friends. They might look scary, but you'll warm up to them easily. These are letters you haven't seen before, but they have familiar sounds. Strangers. These will be the tricky ones. They look different from anything you've seen before and don't have similar sounds to English either. We'll start nice and easy with some true friends. So, let's begin. We'll start at the beginning. Ah, so what sound does this letter make? That's easy, because the name of the letter almost always describes the sound that the letter makes. So it's pronounced ah. That's why this is a true friend. It looks like an English A and it sounds like an English A. What you see here are the printed forms. This is what you'll see on signs, newspapers and anywhere that the letters are printed mechanically. As you can see, both the versions of ah look the same as A in English. Now it's time to take out your pencils. We are going to practice writing. Find some paper and follow along. Even though it is rare to see the printed version of Russian handwritten, you'll practice writing them so you can get used to the shapes. Okay, here we go. Here is the uppercase. And here's the lowercase. Nice. Time for the next letter? Not yet. You just saw the printed version of A. However, when writing by hand, Russians use cursive letters exclusively. This is the way Russians learn to write ever since elementary school. Even though you practice writing in the print style, it's very rare to see that in the real world. When you write Russian, it's going to be in the cursive style. The cursive uppercase A looks like this. While sometimes there is a big difference between the printed and cursive letters, A is pretty straightforward. It's one long stroke and then a short one in the middle. Now here's the lowercase handwritten A. This is very easy too. It's similar to the cursive A in English. And it's also very easy to connect to the next letter. Now it's your turn. Here's the uppercase. And the lowercase. That's it for A. Let's keep moving. 
The second letter we'll learn is another true friend, ka. That means it's just like the English K. It always makes the k sound. In the printed forms, the only difference between upper and lower case is the size. It's writing time. First the printed versions. Here's the upper case. And the lower case. As for the handwritten version, the uppercase is quite similar to the printed letter, but different from the English cursive style. The lowercase is identical except for the size. Now let's write the cursive versions. Here's the uppercase. That means that we have to pick up our pen or pencil after writing the first stroke and then connect ka to the next letter with the second stroke. The lowercase version is the same. Great! You already learned two letters of the Russian alphabet. That means you're ready for your first Russian word. First, look at the printed version and try sounding it out. Did you read kak? Well, you're right. This is how to write the word for how in Russian. Believe me, it's a lot better to learn new words in the original Russian, rather than relying on Roman letters. This will be the first of many new words for you. Now the fun part. We'll write it by hand. For words, I'll just do it in the cursive style. Congratulations! You just written your first Russian word. Now it's time for Svetlana's insights. Practice writing these letters and words until you don't even have to think about it. There is no better way to learn than to write the letters yourself. It's a good idea to keep a notebook with the new letters and words we learn in each lesson. Have you ever heard the Russian phrase Кто там? In the next Alphabet Made Easy lesson, you learn what it means and most of all how to write it. See you there. Пока, пока. Привет всем! С вами Светлана. Hi everybody, I'm Светлана. Welcome to RussianPod101.com. Русский язык за три минуты. The fastest, easiest and the most fun way to learn Russian. In the last lesson, we learned how to express gratitude with спасибо. In this lesson, we'll learn some of the most common greetings you'll use in Russian. Готовы? Are you ready? Поехали! Let's start! The most used informal greeting is Привет. Привет. Привет means hi or hello. We use this greeting when we meet friends, cousins, or close relatives. Please keep in mind that it's a very informal greeting. If you're not close to someone or he or she is older than you, you should not use this word. Here's a more formal way to greet people. Здравствуйте. Здравствуйте. This is a very formal greeting that can be used any time of the day. As a variation, здравствуй can also be used. This is still a little casual, but much more formal than привет. Здравствуйте is actually a variation of здраво желаю, meaning I wish you health. So здравствуйте literally means I wish you to be healthy. Здравствуй. Russian also has equivalents to the English good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. They are доброе утро, добрый день, добрый вечер. They are similar to здравствуйте in politeness and formality. However, remember to use them at the proper time depending on whether it's morning, afternoon, or evening. Доброе утро, which means good morning, 
is usually used before 12 p.m. Dobreje utra. The word dobre means kind. Russians don't say good morning, they say kind morning. The word utra means morning. So literally this phrase means kind morning to you. Very sweet. Dobry den can either mean good afternoon or good day. Since the word zdravstvite can be used at any time of the day, we will hear it more than dobry den, but it's still a phrase you should learn. Dobry den. The final greeting is dobry vecher, and we usually use it after 6 p.m. The word vecher literally means evening. Kind evening to you. Dobry vecher. Very easy, right? The usual way to say goodbye in almost any situation is до свидания, which literally means till the next meeting. До свидания. If you're on casual terms with somebody, you may also use пока, which means bye or see you later. Пока. The phrase you use when leaving someone in the evening or just before bed is спокойной ночи. This phrase works both for formal and informal situations. Спокойной ночи. You can now greet people in many different ways in Russia. Congratulations! Now it's time for Svetlana's tips. As I mentioned in our first lesson, Russians commonly greet each other by shaking hands or slightly nodding the head. What I want to add to this is that Russians are very superstitious people, so we never shake hands over the threshold between rooms. It's considered to be unlucky. So always go into the room first before shaking hands. Women usually kiss each other on the cheek three times, starting with the left cheek. Men hug and pat each other's backs. In the next lesson, we'll learn the meaning of the phrase Извините, вы говорите по-английски? Do you already know it? I'll be waiting to tell you about it in our next Русский язык за три минуты lesson. Пока-пока! See you! Здравствуйте! Я Светлана. Welcome to RussianPod101.com. Alphabet made easy. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn the Russian Cyrillic alphabet, the alphabet. In the last lesson we learned two letters, A and K. These letters are true friends, meaning that they look and sound like their English counterparts. In this lesson, we'll continue our study of the Russian alphabet by learning the three remaining true friends. Ready to go? Well then, let's get started. In this lesson, we'll learn these three letters. Because these are true friends, we know that they are going to look and sound like English letters. Our first true friend of the lesson is M. And yep, it makes an M sound. While some Russian letters do change their sound, M is always pronounced this way. Notice how the upper and lower case printed versions are identical except for the size, unlike the English M. As we mentioned in the last lesson, you will see the print form on menus, packages and maps, so you better learn to read them. Let's write them now. Remember, we are writing the printed forms just for practice. You won't see the printed forms written like this in Russian. Here's the uppercase. And the lowercase. Now that we've seen the printed forms of M, let's take a look at how to write it by hand. The cursive uppercase M looks like this. It's much sharper than the English cursive, but very easy to write. Lowercase m is exactly the same as uppercase, but just a little smaller. Also, when lowercase m comes after another letter, we add a small hook on the left. We'll cover it more when we practice writing some full words. Now we'll write them.
uppercase M is a single stroke so you can connect easily to the next letter without lifting your pen or pencil. That's all there is to M. Let's move on. The second letter you learn in this lesson is another true friend, O. As you can guess, Russian O is the same as English O, and in printed form it's almost identical. It is usually pronounced as O. Sometimes it sounds like A. In later lessons, I'll tell you more about when and why the pronunciation changes. Here's how to write the printed versions. and the lowercase. It's cursive time. If you know how to write a cursive O in English, this shouldn't be a problem for you. O is a single stroke, so you can connect easily to the next letter without lifting your pen or pencil. As for the lowercase O, it's exactly the same, but slightly smaller. Both the lower and uppercase versions connect to the next letter from the bottom. Now let's finish up this lesson with our very last true friend. O. Oh. Our final true friend is the letter T. The Russian T acts just like the T in English. In the printed version, both the upper and lowercase letters look like uppercase English T's, but with the different sizes. Here's how to write the printed versions. And the lowercase. As for the cursive versions, this one is a bit more difficult. The uppercase version looks like this. As you can see, it's not similar to the printed form or English cursive styles. If you thought uppercase was difficult, well, sorry, lowercase t is no easier. It looks a lot like a handwritten English M. If you get confused between the handwritten t and m in Russian, just remember that m is pointy and sharp, like mountains. Once you practice writing these a few times, they won't seem so difficult. There consists of four separate strokes, and you pick up your pen before writing the next letter. And the lowercase. Okay, well done. I think you're ready to learn some new words. Can you read it? It's pronounced tam. This is the word for there in Russian. Now let's practice writing it. We'll start with the te. Move smoothly into the R and then finish it off with that mountainous M. Remember how I said that M gets a little hook when it follows another letter? Well, here it is. Why do we have it? Many Russian cursive letters look similar, so we have to use a hook before M to show that we are writing a new letter. Getting tired yet? I think you can handle another new word. Can you read it? It's pronounced to. You just learned the word for who in Russian. Time to write it. Let's start out with a ka, transition to a nice rounded te, and finish it up with o. Let's take it one step further. We are going to combine the last two words and write a very useful phrase, Kto tam? It means, who is there? You can use it when somebody knocks on your door.
Start with KTO, except with a capital K this time. Now follow it up with TAM. Don't forget the hook. And of course, we'll end the question with a question mark. It's done. Now it's time for Svetlana's insights. Be sure to add KTO and TAM to your notebook. We'll add new words in every lesson, and by the end of the series, you will have a very useful collection of words that you wrote yourself. Well, we met the last of our true friends today, and that means we'll be entering some slightly more sinister waters in the next lesson. But that also means you will be able to expand your vocabulary with more words, including the Russian word for no. We'll learn that and much more in the next lesson of RussianPod101.com's Alphabet Made Easy. Пока, пока. Привет всем! С вами Светлана. Hi everybody, I'm Светлана. Welcome to RussianPod101.com. Русский язык за три минуты. The fastest, easiest and the most fun way to learn Russian. In the last lesson, we learned some words used when apologizing in Russian, including извините and простите. In this lesson, we are going to learn numbers in Russian. Yes, numbers. Числа. From 1 to 10. And you're going to learn them in only three minutes. Три минуты. Are you ready? Let's start. Один. А один. Два. Два. Три. Три. Четыре. Четыре. Пять. Пять. Шесть. Шесть. Семь. Семь. Восемь. Восемь. Девять. Девять. Десять. Десять. Окей, okay, now repeat after me. I'll say the numbers and give you time to repeat each one. Один. Два. Три. Четыре. Пять. Шесть, семь, восемь, девять, десять. Great job! What comes before один? Do you know? It is zero. Ноль. Ноль. You don't have any more excuses. Now you can give friends your cell phone number in Russian. Let's try together. We'll use the phrase мой номер телефона which means my telephone number is мой номер телефона мой номер телефона 8 9 2 4 5 7 1 3 6 10 can you read it by yourself 8 9 Два, четыре, пять, семь, один, три, шесть, десять. Perfect! Now it's time for Svetlana's tips. Numbers are used everywhere. Usually when Russians say phone numbers, they combine the single numbers into tens and hundreds. But if it's a short number that contains less than six numerals, it's usually pronounced as the separate digits. Learn your numbers well, so you can be ready for real-life situations. Do you know the Russian word for a hundred? It's very simple and we'll learn it very soon. In the meantime, your job is to practice the numbers we started in this lesson. From 1 to 10. Пока-пока! До скорого! See you soon! Remember, here's what you can do to learn all of these words by heart. Drill these words with our spaced repetition flashcards, which will help cement these words into your long-term memory. 
save them to the Word Bank, your personal vocabulary collection where you can print out your own study sheets, or review the words with our looped vocabulary slideshow and play it until you know all of the words. So click the link in the description right now and sign up for your free lifetime account to get these lessons and study tools.